Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Jacob Strupek. Welcome to the Bowtie Movie Lounge. I'm joined by three men who are making a reappearance. To my right, starting from my right, I have Sammy McCullough, Taylor Harding, and David Dickerson. Gentlemen, thank y'all for joining. Of course. Are your, have your souls been wrecked, as Taylor would say, of Oppenheimer? In yeah, multiple, multiple ways. Multiple ways? Soul-wrecking experience. Extremely. Um, extremely? Also, I, I've been waiting to say this. We're going to give you a 10-second countdown to hop off this pod, because if you have not seen this movie, you are not allowed to watch this pod. Not allowed to. Now, if you want to spoil yourself. Unless you want to. Unless, unless you, you want to give us to. some support. But I am highly recommending that you do not. Agreed. If you want to be bombed by spoilers, <laughs> just, you know. Stay here. But stay. But you're but more I, than welcome to stay. If, but if, you, if you do stay, this podcast will be the bomb. <laughs> hey, go, hey. There we go. All right, we're, we're dropping bombs all over here. <laughs> all right. Literally. So, gentlemen, let's get ready for, to do this. Y'all ready? Emotionally prepared? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, ladies and gentlemen, oh. welcome to Oppenheimer. Oh. Oh, welcome to welcome to the Bow Tie Movie Lunch. <laughs> gentlemen, this podcast is about to be the destroyer of podcasts. No, the destroyer of the podcast world. Oh. Mm. Well, you know, you said it better than me. I should have just handed it off to you. Honestly. Can 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 you do the whole quote? I actually cannot. It's like, I, I don't. I've, now I've I, become deaf. Yeah, you got to do the, the whole destroyer thing. Worlds. It's like four and a half minutes. I've tried to memorize You've it. tried to you memorize it? Yeah. Did really? you read book, uh, what is it called? American Dad Prometheus. American yeah. Prometheus. I did. I, I should have read American uh, Prometheus. That was the book it was based off of. Yeah. I didn't have time to read it, but I heard of it. I tried to read like a little has, bit. Have you read it? No, I haven't. You haven't read it. I have not read it. So Taylor, you're the only one that has read American That's Prometheus. One of the books so I read about. D- this did you movie. think that this one movie was like one. following kind of like the book, like what the book said? How good was it at following? The book to me was hard. Because yeah. Because it's not written like And it uh, didn't like highlight these like the most entertaining aspects like the movie. It's did. not entertaining. Yeah. It's it's just a factual yeah. book. There's no it's just Fact, 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 and there's so much. So like, I that's what Nolan comes in. That's that's like, a play by play of how of the events that. Occur. Yeah, I I remember like I finished it a week or so before, cool. and and I kept thinking I'm like, how the hell is he going to do this? Like, there's yeah, just yeah. so much. This man's mm. life is just crazy. And w- w- the interesting thing that I picked up from the movie is that it's all in there. He put it all really? in there, but like, so he deserved the three hours. He he he. You could have been there for five hours and add really? still more. I mean, just yeah. little. There's so many little things about like the, with the handshake and how he did and Kitty mm. didn't. Like you didn't really have to put that in there, but he. There's so many parts of the book that made it. That's what most people don't know about. Like, yeah, they most people are watching this just because it's a movie. They don't know how hard. As this, you are saying, what they put in. Exactly. Yeah. Oppenheimer is not a movie or a film. This is an experience. <laughs> yeah. And it, if you yeah, watch the trailer, I agree if you, with that. That's how, it, that's how they say it. That's I think how they portray it. it. Yeah. See this experience. I think it's totally different if you see it in theaters or like at your It'll like never be the same. At home, it'll never totally be the same. Yeah. 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 It'll you never, have, yeah. Like, you have, you have to have see the, this movie in definitely theaters. definitely recommend Unless you have top of the line. I think the only way... Would be have you know some hundred and ten yeah like sound speakers fifteen k with some headphones on that that can somehow <laughs> replicate it yeah. was shaking the movie theater I'm telling you the sound <laughs> was, was so insane the sound was it very was, well done ever, that was one of the was, best parts I have not been able to get on social media I haven't been able to read other books I can't do anything yeah I have I, the only thing so um. Ludwig Gorgensen, who yeah, did, who he did was the in score. Dunkirk too, or but Tenet. Tenet, yeah, he's yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure he, he did, did the uh, music. He did the yeah. music. Yes. He dropped the soundtrack yesterday. It is all I've listened to. Really? <laughs> I can't stop. Wow. It, it is. You've been that engrossed into this story. I was obsessed the second he announced it. I was like, I'm in. Yeah. Are yeah. you? Are you? We're gonna make a movie and get excited about a nerd physicist. <laughs> Like I'm, I'm a huge nerd, and I, I've read a bunch of Einstein's books and and um, the and, theory of relativity, uh, the, all that crap. Yeah. Me, I, like I'm a big Michio Kaku guy, and I, I love reading his stuff. And like I'm, I, 
I became obsessed with this. And then going into it, I'm like, cool, this is going to be like Tenet or going to be like Dark Knight or yeah, was, just yeah. a it's, great no, Nolan flick. It's totally different. It's something else. It's something totally different, which is... Out of the ordinary, just... The first... Yeah. The first Unexpected. Thing, like, up yeah. to the bomb... I, I I was I was I was I loved I loved the movie. Yeah, loved exactly. It. it felt almost kind of like a heist movie where he's getting all. Oh, of I like did. The That's best a good way people. to put it. He's like, all right, Niels Bohr. We got Edward that, yeah. Edward Teller, uh, Enrico Fermi. We got him. He's like, right, let's do it. And like then that. once the score kicks in, you know when the bomb's about to go. Yeah. yeah. You you hear it. It's like that dun 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 just, and you're like, <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> And you know it's coming, but then it, you gotta keep waiting and yeah. waiting and waiting. I know, and waiting. Exactly. like dude, that, that was I, like, crazy. It was David complete turned silence. To me. I was about to cover my ears. I thought my ears were gonna get ripped <laughs> the heck out of Several my face. Several times I was like about to. Yes, yeah. I did it twice. Uh, no, I, 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 could, uh, I, I had to listen. I had to listen. And then when I, and then when I gave up on covering my ears, then it goes. Yeah. Just yeah. What I, I let my, I let my guard down. Yeah, That's I did a good too. Way to, exactly. I let my guard down, like, and oh, then like he, was ta- he said the he said his quote, and then they did it. Yeah. So like I didn't think it was about to come. Or, I don't know. It's, it's also, crazy. the beginning was really good, where they show like uh, Prometheus gave fire to uh-huh. man. I loved that, that. I loved that. Uh-huh. That's where and it reminds we'll, you. We'll that like that like set later. the tone for the movie. Mm-hmm. But the not use of CGI is oh. something oh. that will not come around. Until some brilliant, he genius. has to retire. Yeah. How Why how could he, he outdo this? How yeah, could he yeah. ever outdo this? I mean, it's just agreed. It, it's hard. Like, but what I was gonna say mm-hmm. after the bomb, that I, sequence was very difficult to swallow. I was so uncomfortable. I was literally scared. It it just it shook my soul. Like I was, I was just upset. Like it, huh. it hurt that that. Like, I, have you guys ever like lit off a piece of dynamite or or any type of Some, bomb? Like I used to, I used to do little we've, firecrackers we've had, in my we've fingers. Had, uh, at my camp, yeah. we've had to blow up stuff, like t- to move, push, you know, trees and stuff to okay. make trails. It's like so. I, I I I was a boy scout. So growing up, we would out in Idaho and Utah would just always be blowing stuff up. And one stick of TNT is the most I've ever seen. And wow. that is huge. I mean, yeah. we're, we're at like shooting ranges where there's tons of open space and there's that delay yeah. of the yeah, explosion, exactly. which they captured, not just with the nuke, but with the other bombs, they would go and then you would feel it. Yeah. And that's, that's real. Which that's is, one of the 20,000 po- tons. Yeah, 20,000 20, tons. tons. Wow. I felt TNT. that. When you, you could s- feel it in yes. a theater, and it yeah. wasn't even it wasn't happening. Exactly, this was yeah. Yeah. seventy years ago. You felt like it it kept on going. It it traveled. Ludwig the years. found some vibration that resonates. Some, however, the hell he did that. It's it's right before your ears are about to bleed. Yeah, <laughs> it's just safe, and then it's like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, I like it. All right, so guys. <sighs> If anyone has not noticed, we're talking about Christopher Nolan's historical drama, Oppenheimer. Released July 21st, 2023. Film stars Killian Murphy, Emily Blunt, Matt Damon, Robert Downey Jr., Florence Pugh, Josh Hartnett, Casey Affleck, Rami Malek, and Kenneth Branagh. Oh, yeah. That's just a few. Casey Affleck was in it. Yeah, dude. We'll get dude, into that later. No, <laughs> when you look at the cast on any website, it just keeps going. Yeah, it keeps so going. so many people like, on it. Like, it was like Gary Oldman got like a 20-second. Like yeah. 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 He filmed for no, one like day. No, like the last person Ro- on the Rami cast Malley. member is still a star. Yeah. Josh, like the last Josh person. Peck, and he even has Roderick from Diary yeah, of Ro- Kid. Yeah, I saw Roderick. Which is Have insane. you guys seen the interview with Nolan where he, he is like a huge fan of Diary of a Whippy Kid? Actually. Really? Wow. That's how he found him, is that huh. he watched that and was like, I need him. That's like that's. Because, like, ever, all the cast members, he specifically hunted <laughs> for huh. and, and picked them all out. Yeah. And you know what I think is the crazy part? Like, not just the movie, but they only spent $100 million on this movie. Oh, sure. I yeah. think, I That's think the that same it, as Barbie. So it was at the know, same budget. But yeah. I think that is insane. Like, if you look at Endgame, wow. Endgame was 400 mil. Like, yeah. no CGI. Like, this is insane. Like, how, the, like, I want to get into the, like, yeah. eventually how they did everything in I don't, filming it. I know. I, when I first saw this, and this was like the next thing yeah. that I was going to say, is 
It had a hundred million dollar budget, mm-hmm. which, like you said, I expected it to be higher than that. Just because of like we were on movies that have higher budgets yeah, than that. Yeah, exactly. Like he yeah. and I which have movies. Uh, Give an example. There's one that will come out someday we're, called Rebel Ridge, and that ended up being like I think right around two. Yeah, because it, it was a six year process, and there was it, it shouldn't have cost that much. Yeah, they literally yeah. dropped an atomic bomb, and it was still like only a hundred million. Not a real atomic bomb, but still, like that's a I lot. Mean, yeah, like all my, like that's a lot. You know, like that has to be expensive. But also, if you look at the cast list, from like, what I'm each able... of them usually would ask like twenty million each. Yeah, and oh, yeah. they had forty really good actors who, yeah. who like you can't just. Breeze them away with you know a hundred k or anything. Yeah, these guys want big money. Like Robert Downey Jr., I'm pretty sure. Like by Iron, like the first Avengers movie, he was asking for twenty million, uh-huh. something like that. Uh, but you, all of them took pay cuts. Million yeah, no, they all took pay cuts Marvel. just to be yeah. a part of like Nolan's. On that, yeah. on the Robert Downey Jr. note, okay, so he never has to work a day in his life. No, after the Avengers movies, he's set financially forever. Yeah. For him to come to the screen, including everyone else that was in this movie, and to give that kind of a performance, yeah. And guess obviously what? Obviously, it wasn't financially driven. He doesn't need the money. He he, he came and he whoa, he just delivered. He did. He yeah. really four mil. Like, he only got four mil. And four he million. Still did that with I, that mind boggling really. performance. That's insane. Do y'all know what Killian made? Killian uh, made? I can look that up. Yeah, look look that up. I should have looked that up. Um, but so. At time of recording, we're recording the day after its release. So I watched it the opening night. Uh, he we, made five yeah. mil for your information. Five mil for Silly. Wow. Oh, you, for so one Killian more. Murray? So one more than RDJ. Oh, well, huh. I mean, Man. still, it's, still impressive. That's crazy. Um, so it's so this movie is speculative to make forty-five to fifty million opening weekend, and right now, as we speak, it's at thirty-three million, and it's only Saturday. So no telling where this will go, but this will go down as a cult classic. I, mean, <laughs> I would say, well, not certified really, cult classic. I, I don't know if cult classic is a proper word for it, but a classic. I mean, especially yes. as a historical drama. I think the only hard part about the movie for it being a cult classic is it's such a very mind-boggling movie to grasp. Yeah. It's not yeah. one of those movies that you go see every Saturday and I night. Felt That's that, a one, yeah. that, that is a movie that you have to very... And you have I, to treat yeah. like fine And I feel like you have to have 100% concentration throughout the movie to actually like get everything that's going on. Like you However, have to be all the way in. Here's the caveat. I've been, I've been thinking about this. Like, I, I knew every detail of the story going into it. Yeah. And I, I was able to pick up little things like, okay, okay, yep, okay, I remember that. Like, I, I was following along. I don't even think you need that, though, because the big thing with Nolan movies, and especially like with Tenet, the, he even, there's a line in Tenet where he says, just quit thinking about it, just feel it. Huh. And I think that's the Christopher Nolan experience, is that he wants you to just feel his movies and be lost and immersed in it. So, like, yeah, you, before, yeah, you can be interview. a huge nerd, and you can go through, and you can really find out all the details. And there's, I'm one of those people, and I don't think that's for everybody. I know you are. Yeah, I just <laughs> crazy nerd with the details, but you can just like you know he's building a bomb, and he's getting drugged through the court system. Yeah. Like that's really all you need to know. Yeah, <laughs> and and then you just. Feel the freaking death that you are <laughs> sent through. I mean, yeah. Yeah. No. So I know it's a little late for this, but what are so what are y'all's personal thoughts? I mean, what what are, uh, overall? Just like give give a rundown of like you what guys you go thought. ahead first. Right, I'll end. So it. <laughs> we'll start with Samuel, David, okay. and then Taylor, and I'll just close up. So I have to cut y'all straight. During the process of watching this movie, I was confused out of my mind. Yeah. Because. I was completely <laughs> mind boggled by this move. I'm like, what in the hell is happening? Yeah. Like, what? And I think I really needed to let it marinate for two days. I needed yeah. to let it oh, yeah. sink in. And I'm one of I'm one of those guys. I read the Wikipedia plot. Don't make fun of me. I do it for every movie. <laughs> Calm down. And I had to let that sink in with the movie. And then you have to start connecting dots with like I thought the hardest thing that was to grasp was during his allegations with yeah. being Mm. falsely accused as being a Soviet turncoat. I think that was hard to grasp, but that was kind of like one of the hardest sequences to connect the dots. Yeah, but outside true. of that, once you could connect that with 
the making of the bomb, everything just kind of weaved in. Yeah. And I, after that, I understand the movie through and through. Now, would I like to watch it again just to really get a crystal clear? I think I would do that sometime Definitely. in the future. That is a good question to ask. Yeah. All right. So Dude. for me, I split the movie into the three parts. So it was him and his early life in college, mm -hmm. him building the bomb, and then the black and white sequence with Robert Downey Jr., him getting the court, the whole court thing. So I, I think that the middle part where he's building the bomb is a mm -hmm. perfect, like, 10 out of 10 part of the movie. And I think that was the be the, my favorite part of the movie. Uh, I think it was probably the most well-made. Um, and then you go to his early life. And I think I really liked that, too, because it kind of showed how he, you know, became Oppenheimer. How yeah. he, and I think I would give it, like, a 9 out of 10. Yeah, so you're, so you're rating yeah, each and then, third. Yeah, and then the last part, just like Samuel said, it, it sort of lost me for mm -hmm. a little bit. Like, a little bit confused at times, and I need to rewatch it, definitely. I, this might change on rewatch, but I wasn't mm -hmm. totally into it, like, the part right before. Yeah. And so I'm gonna give that like an eight out of ten, even though I still really did like it. So in total, it's like a nine out of ten movie. That's okay. what I, that's what I took away from it. Good deal. Yeah, I love it. Solid. All right, Taylor, hit, take it away. It's the greatest film of all time. <laughs> greatest wow. film of all time, and it will be for a very long time. I thought wow. you said that, that on Ex Machina. Uh, yeah, no, that was in my top three. Top okay. three. Okay, top, top three. three. Top three. That is a very bold statement. I'll give it that. The <laughs> the message in that movie, you you. You give the smartest man alive at the time mm -hmm. an impossible task. And you, a very dangerous one. Yeah. You, like, you either build us a bomb that we're going to go kill hundreds of thousands of people with. Or we all or, die. Or tens of thousands. Or we, we all die. Yeah. Or, or the troops were sitting or in you to get Yeah, or destroyed. you send the bomb up and then everyone dies because the atmosphere catches on fire. Well, yeah. oh, I exactly. thought that was a scary part. Like, yeah. dude, imagine being the man behind it. Like, if I press this button. I just disintegrated us. Like, like the whole entire and world. <laughs> I think that's my favorite part is him portraying the horror after. Yeah. After like oh. the scene when he's in the gym. Yeah. Like when he's yeah. completely phased. And yeah. then he sees the girl with like the shredded skin. Yeah. That. Well and done. then And then like if you see it in the trailer when he's like looking around, he's completely like. I have start. I have ended World War One, and I have started the Cold War. He yeah. knew that from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that is what is so good about this movie. The ending is the perfect be end of World War Two into the Cold War. It is yeah. the greatest movie yeah, that, of all time yeah, that, because I mean, it's the biggest the message, part in history. Yeah, you. I don't think we all take for granted the nuclear power that we have as a society. Like we don't know how destructive it is. Well, yeah. what cost that was. Uh, that like too. one thing I kept thinking about, because I heard this was a horror movie. That, I it did had hear a that. little aspect is. of it. It, 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 does. it, it, it had the, it had the aspect, an emotional, psychological. It, it, yeah. I, I wasn't like scared. Movie. Like a, like a like a horror movie. They, oh, I was. They, 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 really? they made it. <laughs> I like, really was. Yeah. It, it horrifies your soul. It upset me so much after the bomb because of the way that the bomb feels, and th that was the whole thing I was saying with like, if you've actually seen something explode, it shakes you. Yeah. And, I mean, even even like hearing a gun go off. Yeah. Like yeah. people don't take off. How much Go power. shoot a shotgun and yeah. tell how me, much like, power. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah, take, take the headphones <laughs> off. Like, yeah. get yes. a good whiff of that <laughs> exactly. hot <But> this lead. <laughs> bomb. Well, and as far, and I'm sure we'll jump back to this, but as far as I'm able to figure out the technical bomb, because he won't actually say how they did it. He wants to keep some mystery. Yes, there's, there's no nuclear core. Yeah. But, like, do you guys know how the bomb works? I watched a video yeah. on it, and... They did like a Google map simulation of the bomb dropping yes. and evidently like inside there's a tube where the uh the uranium that they were collecting when he puts the uh the marbles, the marbles into the jar mm. that is put into a cylinder and it knocks No 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 that was that the f it? that was the first one It was So that was the shooting gun model It was The original model that they wanted to do was the way that a gun works cuz these yeah. guys have never made bombs these yeah. these are brand new is that they were going to shoot they were going to shoot Either the plutonium or the uranium, which yeah, is another huge I, that's problem. that's what I was looking at. Into the core, and then it would go. But the problem was... Is and they that would keep splitting. The reason that they didn't yeah. do it is that it deteriorates so fast, by the time it gets there, it's nothing. And so that's why that bomb didn't work. Oops. The way that this bomb works 
is that you have your uh, plutonium and uranium core. It's a perfect grapefruit cylinder. It's mm -hmm. about 20 pounds. Around it, that's what those cubes were that they were, they were building. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those are the explosives. And what happens is at the exact same, down to like the hundredth nanosecond, those all explode at the exact same time because that's very important. Mm. Yeah. And what it does is it compresses that plutonium and uranium so much that it causes the atoms to split, and then that's where the chain reaction is, and it, it explodes. So and you told so me you fuses. didn't know how it worked. <laughs> so, so it, bro, no, bro knows well, how no, to no, build no. it. So, so, so in the movie, they just don't have the plutonium and uranium core, but they right. still built something like that yeah. to, to get the mushroom cloud, because yeah. that's how you get that I think they design. were also focused more on the after effects and the building, much less not as much like the, all the small the science. scientific because yeah. no like only a couple geniuses oh, are really we, we can spend yeah. here two hours explaining how that works it is so complicated yeah. especially if we had that in time. the 40s these dudes yeah. didn't have cars <laughs> yeah. they were on horseback yeah pretty much <laughs> i mean so no computers so, needed no. in that time so the, the main takeaway is like you know there's the difference the different types of bombs there's the the fission and the fusion which, what you explained, is basically fusion that implodes. Fission, yes, because fusion, you're fusing the hydrogen and, yeah, fission, and, you, and the nitrogen yeah. atoms together, and that explosion w is what separates the uranium and the and the plutonium atoms on a and a quantum level, and the right. chain reaction is just madness, and then right. that's, where, that's, that's where everything that's takes off. Yes. right after that. Yes, I love it. Yeah, I mean, so. Greatest Which, of all time to end my note. Greatest of all time. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I mean, we can definitely spend so much time looking at like the science of this all, like the chemistry within it. Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah, we. That's not. That's not why we're here. <laughs> but this does make for a more interesting uh, oh, topic. But so, let's talk about like the lead up to that. So obviously, we were shown the genius and the. Out of the obsession of uh, Julius Robert Oppenheimer. Well, you see the madness yeah, the inside madness. of his mind. You can see that he's very troubled. Yeah. Yeah. Like and in the beginning, whenever at the he's beginning, at the school. When he's in the bed, when he's in bed. His yeah. panic attacks like, yeah. were so good. Fucking jarring. Like, I've, I've personally had panic attacks, and like, it is so freaking the onset. <laughs> <laughs> it I is bet. so close to that. Yeah. Where all the sound goes away and the screen is doing this. You're doing it. And he's it, just literally. like, ah. <laughs> you just breathe through. You'll be, ah. And it, like, it, it, ah. I've never had one, but I hear, I've i talked to people who it's have. And they say, like, they think it's over. Like, huh. the yeah, world's you, just you falling you apart die. right in front of them. Yeah. Like, they have nothing left. And they, they're running on that last leg of energy. Huh. So and yeah, so you 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 start the movie off, and you, you there, there's no talk of a bomb yet because the, no. the like the Germans haven't invaded. I think it was Poland. 35, yeah. 38, yeah. and then he's he's just at, at Princeton, I believe, is where he started. Uh, it was no, Berkeley. 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 He ends at Princeton. Okay. Yeah. Um, because he's there, and you just kind of get a glimpse into who this dude was. He was this beautiful poet. Yes. He was really, he, he was like this romantic, or yeah. this word I keep hearing, deviatant. He, a, I mean, a womanizer. A huge, yeah, huge, huge womanizer. womanizer. There were far more women in his life than just those two. Yeah. He had like six women at all times. And the interesting thing is, is that there's, there's some stories that you get in American Prometheus where he was, I think he was on a date with a woman. Well, so there's there's two quick stories I'll tell that weren't in the movie. There was one time where he was on a date with a woman. He was driving around. He had this idea that just popped into his head. He gets out of the car. Mm -hmm. He leaves her in the car. He walks around for three hours, and then he decides to go home. Whoa. Because home was closer when the car was. He just forgot about her. Now that's W huh. is. There was yeah. another time where Bro, he was a gangster. He was yeah, on a date with time. a woman, and he, he couldn't resist himself, and he just kissed her. Like, he couldn't physically hold back. And he's like, I, I'm just, I'm so sorry. Like, I just gotta go. He's bro, a bro, bizarre bro is guy. wild. Holy yeah. wild. Guy. Yeah, take, no, I think, take notes. I think oh, Killian, Killian. Like, I'm super happy for him because 
he was in Peaky Blinders, and he's been in some other stuff, but he's never really got like the recognition. Yeah, and this movie is definitely gonna put him on the map. Yeah, let's have, he's, he's have, just been that guy, but now he is the guy. Have yeah. you guys seen Sunshine? I've Sunshine. Not, I've not. I was about to ask. Like, come on, like that was my favorite movie for many years. Yeah, and he I'm plays. Older. The physicist on the ship, like, which is also about an atomic bomb. It's about an atomic bomb. How many yes. football fields or a football field, and they're throwing it yeah. into the sun? I think it. Dang. Yeah, similar, similar premise. You know, I mean, well, and he technically he's not the lead in that, but he is. He and, is, and, and ultimately, he is such. And it, I, I think I've seen everything he's ever done, and I'm really? except for Peaky Blinders, I haven't even watched the show. Same. You're, you're not. Um, hey, yeah, I'll check you're you're in a, you're in a familiar room, brother. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I get roasted for not yeah watching that. There's but. there's a lot of things I'm roasted for for not watching. He's so good. <laughs> but yeah. no, like that's a good point. Yeah. Is he's always been like number five. Yeah, number like 10 Scarecrow. Yeah, like, on on a Christopher Nolan film, this is finally his time to be a leading exactly. man. And I like like you said, I'm like I'm proud for him. I'm happy for him. But yeah, let's let's talk let's about go. Killian for a little bit. And so then, and do you then know what his diet was on set? I no, do not. What, was what was it? I bet it was bad. He, he only dude. ate almonds for oh fifty seven days. What? Yeah. Dude, that is no wonder uh-huh. he looked very yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, okay. he looked he can, terrible. He can, he, can, he can cut some bread with those so cheekbones. He, <laughs> he ate nothing but almonds for fifty seven days. So like, there's so, I've watched so many interviews with like the cast, and they would always yeah. go out to eat, yeah. and he would just so go back eat to almonds. his just, eat just almonds. almonds. Totally. Well, yeah. I'm not gonna lie, bro. He was looking fresh during yeah. the premiere. When, he was looking. Yeah. When you Dude. see him naked though in the movie, <laughs> right? Shoot. And when he's sitting basically like this, yeah. And then you see like his whole body, like you don't see his junk, but you his skin was kind of translucent. Yeah, it didn't, yeah. No, it he, didn't look. It good. looked. It didn't look healthy. Well, yeah, and the, his whole chest. Well, and that's the thing terrible. with Oppenheimer is that he didn't eat very much when he was at Los Alamos. He's yeah. the yeah. amount yeah. Of constantly smoking. No, Killian looked. He smoked like, like two packs lot, a day. A lot like Oppenheimer. Yeah, yes. especially when you look at a comparison photo from Oppenheimer to. Killian, you know, it was very like yeah. oddly similar. I was like, how did he like do like how did he like yeah even the cheekbones? Oppenheimer the cheekbones? had those, those bread cutting cheekbones. Yeah, yeah. If, if you look at a photo of Oppenheimer, like his face is just kind of sunken in. Yeah, like, exactly. Kinda... That so that's how Christopher Nolan chose him. Is that uh, the front cover of American Prometheus has his face? Is one of the most really? famous photos? And he stared at it for years and was like. Oh, I know who that is. Yeah, and then that's exactly. why you picked Killian. Exactly. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. No, that was interesting. I, I think that Christopher Nolan's like whoever he has as a casting director. I don't know who. Um, I think he, it's Lisa Joy, his wife. I think she's oh, yeah. in charge of casting, but he personally handpicked the entire cast. Yeah, which is like that's what I was like getting to. Is like yeah. he, you know, usually you do have a casting director, but. He knew the perfect. He just, exactly. Yeah. He had it. Yeah. He's such an... And here's the thing. So this is... Especially with this being our first podcast on a Christopher Nolan film. Is it really? Yeah. This is our first podcast on a Christopher wow. Nolan film. Let's take a little Damn. bit of time to talk about Christopher Nolan for just for a Briefly. bit. Briefly. So Christopher Nolan, I will say, has he comes off as a very old school director. Yeah. He'll like, film in but 70 But he takes mil- in yeah. the nuances of yeah. cinema. Exactly. That's he, what... He's so versatile in his role, in like what he chooses, and that's what makes him such a good director. He's innovative too. You know, he's he's old fashioned and innovative. He's very original within his own craft. Mm. I and, think because he sees and feels time differently, yeah, is why he can share those timelines with us. You like a memento. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah. found it a little bit similar because that was his first rated R movie since Memento. And the only other one. 2000. Yeah, yeah he's only had two Insom- rated R. Insomnia. Yeah. Uh, Three. Insomnia was uh, rated R? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah so, he's probably right. Uh, so those are his only three R films. I was actually about to watch Following recently. It's the it's, only one I haven't seen. So it's the only one I haven't seen. I need to go back and rewatch Insomnia, and I need to watch Following. So, Insomnia is good. So... Insomnia is rated. I mean, following is rated R. So. Oh really? Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. So That's four. what it says. Okay. Yeah, well, it was cool. similar to Memento in the way that it used the black and white. Yeah. Used the black and white to portray a different timeline. Do you guys know what was going on? Like, did you understand the in black mid- and white switch? Not, no, no, no. In in oh, Oppenheimer, oh, oh. I was confused by it. I, Not entirely. Like, the color. So the color shots 
are from his physical perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah, black the and script? white is yeah, the like, objective or, or oh, so subjective, so, whatever the opposite one is. Oh, and the good. reason that he did that is that, and this talks about it in the book, is that there are some details about his life or about what happened that we don't really have answers yeah. for because right. everyone's dead. Well, because and speaking on that note, a lot of it was kept yes, secret. A lot of it was kept, it was kept secret for 50 years from no, the and, yeah. on, and on Taylor's point, uh, whenever Nolan was writing the script, he, he yeah. wrote it in the first person yes. for Killian, but in the black and white scenes, he wrote it in third person. Yeah. To show wow. that it kind of now, was. If you go yeah. look at the script, and yeah. like we've looked at tons, obviously. Like, yeah. He, he writes, like, I get in the car. Or, like, yeah. Yes. Like, it, it's, not like, so cool. it's not like, okay, Killian's going to walk across the room. Yeah. It's like, I walked I across, walked the, across room. the room. And everyone's like, because I guess this, because there was only one script, because that's yep. how he does it. Yep. It was it was red with black writing on it. And it's supposed Ooh. to be very just weird. And so all oh. the cast members. Just like I don't know, this feels weird holding this. Like just reading it with yeah. the color tone. Yeah. And, yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, I know. I just I love the way Christopher Nolan, like he takes so much seriousness into like his filmmaking, his writing, all the aspects surrounding the the making of of any of his films. Like you know, we've all heard the the th- the stories of like he doesn't allow any phones or chairs on mm-hmm. his sets. Really? Yeah. So, very old fashioned. Do you guys know how many days this took to film? Took like four months, right? Fifty seven days. Wow. Which is no insane. Way. That's insanely that is, fast. In, that is like insane. whiplash fast. That is crazy. Yeah. Well and whiplash is like eighteen. Because days. like that's insane. like if you think about crazy. it, yeah. we like it makes a little bit of sense because like shooting days are just really with cast members. Yeah. There's a lot of other like w- w- which is crazy. Fifty seven days. We worked on freaking Iron Claw for six months or however long yeah. that was. Way more. And like, like, he got all that done in 57 yeah. days. He, he basically replicated an, into- an atomic explosion I know. in yeah. one of those days. How in on earth in 57 days <laughs> yeah. did he get all that without CGI? Yeah. Man's like, I'm going to do this without you. And you aren't gonna like it, like yeah. Well, so since we're talking about his, his his filmography, when they were rendering, so my favorite thing about Christopher Nolan is that he includes mathematical theorems in every like single movie in Interstellar. Yeah. So specifically, what I was gonna say about Interstellar is that so Kip Thorne um, is, uh, I think he's the the number one physicist in his field. He's a teacher over at Caltech. He helped write the script for Interstellar. And that's, really. and that's where Oppenheimer was when he was working at yes. Cal Berkeley. Yes. He was yeah. part yes. of Caltech. And technically, Kip Thorne was the original writer of Interstellar. Right. Because Interstellar had Spielberg to direct. And mm-hmm. um, so he wrote a book called The Science of Interstellar. I just finished it. It's so cool. Huh. But what's amazing on the came out the year that Interstellar did. Yeah, yeah, Mm -hmm. he drops right after, and he explains scientifically how Interstellar is the most is correct. It's mad. It's 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 so cool. But that's pretty cool. The rendering side of when they so they they have a physics machine when they were doing Interstellar, and they put in the mathematical formulas of the black hole. Mm -hmm. It took like each frame. I think took a hundred hours. Oh yeah, I heard about that. Wow. It took a crazy amount of like I mean, frame because they wanted the black hole to be mathematically exact because yeah. that was like Kip Thorne's most important thing, and it just it took forever to render. Wow! So the fact that they had zero CG in this, that was he's probably happy about it. Yeah, I was like, imagine. I don't have to deal with these computers and shit. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he probably didn't even use CGI for Interstellar. He probably just went into a wormhole out in the universe and just yeah, got exactly. that done. He, he, oh yeah, yeah. it's definitely a real movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, he, yeah, he sent Matthew McConaughey all the way out there. It took a hundred days to render the final copy of the black hole itself. Oh which wow, is insane! Wow, that's yeah. so crazy. You know, the also, fact that yeah. the rendering of that took longer than the shooting days of Oppenheimer. You know, you know what's interesting? Madness. This is another little thing from the movie. So he cast his daughter yeah. as the girl whose face peels off. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's really? his to, to give, to that's give the right. cast to give him and the cast like more emotional connection to I the did movie. See that. Uh-huh. Because like him seeing his daughter's like face get pulled off made him like more, you know? Yeah, it was feel actually, bad yeah, for the like, ja- uh, Japanese and all that. And yeah. then he steps onto like the charred body. Which was yes. that was, that was, that was that's what really that's the one that got oh, me. That, that, that got me. Like just, dude, that was then he great. Steps through the, it steps through and it just crunches. Well, and Not that's all dark. you hear. It's, it's like it's so. I could hear a pin drop. It was so uh, the theater was completely sold out. 
I had the perfect Same. seats, perfect thing. Oh, we had Everything really good seats. Yeah, we no, had, we had great we had seats. Got seats. Got y'all hooked up. During the it's bomb right. and then any of his panic attack scenes. How many did he have? Like three or four. He, he had, had three a lot or of four. good ones. Yeah. Yeah, the score and the music and the sound. Oh, Definitely like, elevated this movie. Like, I it was probably it was the best sound I've ever seen. Interstellar. I thought Interstellar's track was maybe a hair better. But that's my personal uh, The preference. only thing I would say is I think the Interstellar score is maybe the greatest score yeah, the, of the, all time. The Cornfield Chase, Cornfield Chase, Hans Zimmer. That, that's probably the best score of Hans all time. Hans Zimmer, to date, is the greatest composer to have ever lived. Yeah. You connect that with Christopher Nolan. I connect that have... with Beethoven and Bach and, and, oh, wow. and everyone. Dang, bro. He's, he's the best. Well, and he's okay. from the same place that they're from, which is, which is even Where? crazier. That's true. Uh, I think he's German. Austria. Yeah, Austria. Okay. Yeah, I think he's from, I, I think, I'm pretty sure he's Austria. The cool Austria. thing in Interstellar, though, is that they went um, I, I forget exactly where it is, but the oldest organ in the world, which is like six or seven hundred years old, still works. And it's this living, breathing monster. Wow. And that's where Hans Zimmer went and did Interstellar. So the next time you it watch in Interstellar, Switzerland, it's in Switzerland. Around since 1435. Yep. Wow. wow. Still that's working. 800 Insane. years old. The next time you watch Insane. Interstellar, Really pay attention to it because every note is a is like a breath. It's like, oh, oh my gosh! It, in, tw- it in twelve years, years it'll be eight hundred years old. That's oh, that's crazy. That's insane. Yeah. So yeah, that that's a fun little understand thing. The score for Oppenheimer is amazing. Yes. Yeah. The score for Interstellar still. I, I'm such a big well. The thing s- with space. The junkie. thing with Oppenheimer I, I is. Too. I've gotten into it after. Oh, since whenever so whenever they didn't use a score, like whenever it was all silent, oh, that dude. like. Dude, that was yeah. crazy. You know what almost like made it, itself yeah. a score is the the slamming of the feet yeah. in the gym. That was um, that was yeah. uh, that was like part of the score. When when the people were cheering for him and his panic attack kicked and you hear the cheers and it's just so fucking loud and you're just like with him and you're just like I feel just as uncomfortable and then the sound yeah. cuts and you're like <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like yeah it's very unnerving <laughs> like my favorite part is when all you hear are just the sounds of people standing up like, just no, little there, things. there was a part where you can't even hear it you can just hear Cillian breathing yeah you can hear yeah, him yeah, just yeah. breathing <sighs> and Killian yeah um yeah. Irish uh-huh. he's Irish um yes, we know. so whenever he's whenever he's like <laughs> You can hear him breathing. He's looking around, and then the people start getting up to like standing up to giving him give him an, a standing ovation. Like you can hear the sounds, just the sounds of them standing up. Like I don't know the yeah. the use of the of sound within this movie oh, was like now I know what you're talking phenomenal. About. Just hear yeah. the, cr- the, the just ruffle the, of the shoes, the ruffle the of the shoes, clothes, the just, clothes just standing up. People you don't talk, hear anything. Else. People talk a lot of shit. About Nolan and his sound issues. You mean like the dialogue yeah, issues? Like with Ten yeah. yeah. or it's a... too loud. I can't hear what they're saying. I, shut I, well, up. It drives me crazy because he is more. I wasn't telling you guys to shut up. I, I was telling people that. <laughs> no. that <it> says, <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, I, I got you. Is that like. Sorry, sir. He wants you to feel it. Like the little details. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like he did it for a purpose. He, you he, mean, there's, yeah. a, there's a reason that he's doing it like yeah. that. Yeah, I thought at times, like, like. There was this one. Oppenheimer was a better little though. Bit. Uh, like a little bit. There I was, was like, wait, what did you say? Yeah. Where you know the dialogue saying? was a little. But when I, I don't mean bad. There was just something he could have touched up, barely. Tenet yeah. is the is the one, and and I love that movie so much. But like Tenet is the one where like when they're they're doing the tour around the Freeport. Yeah. And I think it's uh, it's Robert Pattinson, and he's with yeah. that that guy who's telling him about like what a Freeport is. You really cannot hear a damn word. <laughs> yeah, you really is. It's like, and I think he's doing that to make it seem like like more real. Like you're Sorry, there, and you can't you're hear there. what they're saying. You just can't. Like, you just can't immerse understand. yourself. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah, like yeah, the you can hear him say, "This is where they go, and the plane goes here, and the door locks here." It's like, okay, yeah. yeah. Oppenheimer <laughs> was much better. It, yeah, it was it with was. delivering a, a good balance between sound and the the yeah. dialogue. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, that's what I liked about it. It wasn't completely dialogue driven. But yeah. there was so much. It, I know there was a lot of dialogue. Make, they made, uh, it, they I, made I it disagree. The perfect happy medium. I think it was pretty dialogue. I, I driven. disagree. I think it was very dialogue driven, and that's what I, I was going to talk about wasn't next. Com- it wasn't fully like like. Yeah. I know, have y'all seen Air? Yeah, no, I, not I, yet. I watched it. I did it was watch that. Good. Not yet. It's okay. I, that, I mean, yeah, it was all right. So I was like, okay, well, I mean, I kind of like dialogue driven movies after watching Air because it was 
absolutely all dialogue driven. Well, I mean, you, how movie, are you gonna make that not dialogue I mean, driven? That's watch the right. well, that's any, the point. I'm that's saying that's the thing about like, Oppenheimer. You can't have like a non dialogue. driven Watch any Tarantino movie. Yeah, all yeah. Tarantino movies have heavy yeah, amounts true. of dialogue. Yeah, that I mean, is true. He is the god of conversation pieces. Yeah. No well, one does it better than he does. But like, kind of what you were saying though, it's like it. it with Oppenheimer, you're not just sitting there hearing people talk. You all of a sudden he'll have a panic attack, or the score yeah. will pick up. Mm. That's, what, all, I, yeah. that, that's yeah. what I was trying to touch on. Yeah. Gotcha. I, I see it, there's mean. yeah, this is very well done. But Don't want to get into the storyline. Yeah. So so let's <laughs> we could riff let's, forever. Let's, let's take it by yeah, we, we've been rambling. <laughs> so, but like one thing I was gonna say. So like it's it's very. This is bookended. This whole film is bookended by the politics. There's that surround the film. Like, how did y'all feel about the politics? Did you guys get it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no faith. Nah, nah. Not really. Not really. Do you know why he was being put through that whole system? So because I, they wanted to prove that he wasn't a spy. So or this, a, co a communist. Had, yeah, yeah, a communist. Yeah, communist spy. Yeah. His I communism had, before World War II was wasn't just as bad as it, it was. Just now. like an idea. Yeah. It was, it was kind of like. And then yeah. once the Cold War started, because, because of the Soviets, you became yes. an enemy of the the state. Yeah. Because yeah. secretly, and we didn't realize this for. It's like 20 years, or no, no, there, there, there was a long time after World War II that we didn't know that Stalin was killing his own people. Yeah. And there was, I think he killed 40 million he of his own lot. people. And, and communism, I mean, that's, that's really, and that's one of the biggest reasons that we're constantly at fight, like with Russian stuff. Yeah. And so they thought he was a communist. I and think, they were going to prove it, and that's just where it's, it's very confusing. Yeah. I think... The big, I had a big point on this. I think the reason that Oppenheimer was investigated and put under trial is the suspicion that he was a turncoat for the Soviets. Yeah. And I think when he publicly speaked about going against the atom, the hydrogen bomb, not the atom bomb, <laughs> the reason that he did that is because he was so scarred for making yeah. the atom bomb. He yeah. felt yeah. bad horrible. about it. Yeah. And I think that what he was trying to show is that he didn't want... America to build the hydrogen bomb because it's ten times worse than the atom bomb, and he knew. Do you know why that's bad though? Why? Uh, well, what do you mean? Because then you know if if America makes one, then Russia no. has to make one. There, there's there's a specific reason. So first, the guy that makes the hydrogen bomb is in Oppenheimer. Do you guys know who it was? Yeah, it was um. Oh, what was? What it's was it's name? Edward Teller. It's the guy. It's, yeah, that it's, guy. Yeah. It's the the I, I can uh, never say yeah. his name right. <sighs> it is the 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 the, the Stachy brother. Here, I'll find oh, um, he's the guy that tries to leave the camp. Oh, he's like, I'm not yeah. gonna let you leave. He's yeah, the actual guy, yeah, yeah. scientist yeah, that builds the the hydrogen bomb. The Good. reason that he was against it is that we're making bombs bigger, but our targets aren't changing. They're the same size. He's yeah. like, what do you want to destroy? He's like, the the atom bomb or the nuke can level a city. Yeah. He's yeah. like, what, what do you, you want to do? Level a yes. continent? That's exactly, that was his exact thing. He's and like, there he's, is no point. He's scarred of a chain for just be creating a bomb that created two cities. Imagine being the person who destroyed a continent. Yeah. Like, vaporizing. Oppenheimer uh, feels it. So, yeah, that's, yeah. so Edward. Uh, Benjamin Safdie? Safdie. So, he's yeah. a well, major Safdie. director. Yeah. yeah. Really? He's the one that did uh, Good Times. And Uncut Gems. And Uncut Gems. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Heaven Knows What. Okay, I don't, I don't know, know that. that I don't know that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how but I feel. I think like I've learned, I've read up on napalm, and napalm is yeah. liquefied gasoline, and that stuff is insane. That stuff can. It's a war sick. crime. Yeah, it's a war crime. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's illegal now. by the Jeeva Ninja. And imagine that, but you just char a continent. Nothing there's, left. There's yeah. no reason. That's crazy. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, the hydrogen bomb. Like, it, and we still made it. Yeah, there's a video <laughs> of of them igniting the only one ever, and it. It just it takes out yeah, the did whole it, frame. Did they do it at Point Nemo in the Pacific? Yeah, and all yeah. the ships yeah. are just. Yeah. Shh. <laughs> Which is insane. You're just yeah. like, okay, Dude. Are okay. You, are you trying to annihilate yeah. all, like Australia or something? Mm -hmm. Like, I think this movie hits so much harder, and, and I the think it's so what... much harder today. With like, we know how like, if we get into war and someone drops a bunch of, if we start dropping hydrogen bombs, we're all gonna die. Do you guys know about the Doomsday Clock? Hard. No, I, I don't want to know about that crap, man. So Wait, there's, I've heard there's, only briefly. There's a metaphorical doomsday clock, and it's I ticking? think it, it it's it's always ticking, but w what it's God. representing is how many uh, seconds to midnight we are, and once we're at midnight, that's nuclear war. What? And I think it came out during the Cold War because mm. we were t terrified because there was nukes at Cuba aimed right at us. 
Right. And that's how that's how the, that's the Cold War. Ninety miles. And you, and you know From what, the Russians. You know what's crazy? Yes. Right after making the atomic bomb, we go right into Cold War, nuclear war. Yeah, people so think like, that it started yeah. later than it did. Well, like, yeah. that's what Oppenheimer. It's gonna happen again. Up on. Like, it's gonna. Yeah. And so, what the clock was is that during the Cold War, we were two minutes to midnight. It was very close. Have you guys seen Watchmen? No, not, I, I haven't not, seen Watchmen. I'm Watchmen, not. the comic talks way more about it because that movie is also about nuclear uh, war yeah. and stuff like that. Zach Schneider. Today, right? you guys know how close we are today. Yep. Twenty seconds. We are closest. We are closer to nuclear war than we ever have been in history. Please don't tell well, me that. With, well, <laughs> please don't tell me that. Well with, well, with everything going on within the and world, and someone right pull now, down the hand down, like please, <laughs> please. Yeah. yeah. So the the whole the fear to understand like that fear then is terrifying, and it's even scarier today. It, it, yeah, and there's a we term could for die it. like What's this. It called? Um, it's like. Mutually assured destruction or something. Or oh. like if if we drop a bomb, we know that we're getting it back. So I think that's what's kind of keeping us at bay. Do you remember yeah. Oppenheimer's little speech at the end with the scorpions? Scorpions. I'm trying to remember. In the book, it's it's a, it's a huge it's... thing. He gives a speech to I think the Senate, and what he says, he's like, right now, because the Soviets it, it, during that point in the movie, the Soviets have a bomb. The Germans, uh, because uh, Heisenberg. Yeah. What's his first name? Heisenberg. Well, that's that's I where that comes from, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, Heisenberg was the German scientist working on the bomb over there. They all have bombs, and his whole thing was he's like, "We are scorpions in in in, in a cage fighting other scorpions." Mm. Is like I like that analogy because scorpions oh, yeah, will that. will will take a poison to take a hit. They'll kill really? themselves to be able to kill their enemy. That's exactly where we're at. Yeah. 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 And th- uh, that was his whole thing. He's like, "We have done that's something basically- terrible." Yeah. What you said, mutual assured destruction. It's like once they like it's when you look at a map and you see all the lines of the nuclear bombs and where they're going. It looks like just a bunch of strings. It looks like a spider web. Yeah, it's just it's just a network of like you know you hit me, I hit you back yep. type thing. And then everyone launches. And theirs. it's not going to be one because it's going to be all of them. In certain game theory books I've read, they've talked about how it would go down, mm-hmm. and they would launch hundreds of them. Because we're going to shoot down a certain amount of them, and they still need to come through. Yeah. They don't send one. They send hundreds. And we have to pray to God that we can take them all out of the sky. But theoretically, if it were to really go down, it, it would be impossible. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter. We don't have enough to shut them all down. And same with us. We have, I think, the most nukes, something like a 1,000. Yeah, we had the most. And it's like yeah. China or Russia. I don't theoretically, know the exact we, however many China has. They, they, yeah. yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Okay. So you want to get into the plot? Let's, let's turn. Let's turn back towards the movie. I, I love. I love this talk <laughs> about like real the real world politics. But no, let's let's talk about the movie, the politics surrounding the the film, like w- concerning Oppenheimer, and what was given, like what was actually like, you know, the concern with Oppenheimer, like back in the day, like you know, we touched a little bit on it within the fact of. Him being a communist, like back then, the politics seemed ex-communist. Right. Well, he, well, he loved was... he loved the idea of communism because it helps a lot of people. But he never he and he donated money to the party. Right. But he was never a card holding party member. Right. Mm. That that was that was the whole thing. Was as his far wife? As we know. His, yeah, his wife, wife Kitty. Yeah, his wife was. was. Kitty that's, was. That's, that's all what they of were them. touching. Gene Tatlock. Yeah, Gene Tatlock was. Who Florence Pugh plays. Yeah. Um. All everyone was. What you laughing at, my boy? How yeah. uncomfortable was that nudity, Dude. by the way? Yeah. How, so, David, what, how'd you feel about that? You're the Dude, one laughing. I, over I here. just like wild. I was like, bro, is this really necessary? <laughs> like, yeah. Well, okay, it, that's it, it, it was. It yes. was. It was. I guess. Yeah. So, y'all feel like it was necessary? Because you you saw nudity two ways. You saw this romantic. Because he it's all kind of a hate. He like, like a vulnerability yes. between them. Yeah. Because you're inside of his soul. That's what he want. He wanted to show you what that was like. Yeah. Yeah. Because that yeah. was a big aspect of his. Yeah. You can't leave yeah. that out. I mean, if Christopher yeah. Nolan's gonna focus on how to hand- the handshakes when he's gonna touch up on. Well, how was, I think she were. was naked for like. I think like what something like f- at least fifty percent of her appearances. Yeah, yeah like the that big was, the big thing that like, they would do in real life is Gene Talak and Oppenheimer would lay in bed and they would read poetry together while they're having sex. Like it was this very. <laughs> That's what happened at the beginning. Yeah. He, he was reading Sanskrit, and, and yeah. she's like, "Read it," and it was and it was the famous Bhagavad. It was the famous quote from the Bhagavad. 
Bhagavad Gita, yeah. and and so that's, Murphy read and it that's and that's what they would do. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, yeah. that's it shows like you know a sense of. I mean, at first it seemed like his relationship with was good. Gene Tatlock came first before he actually well it yeah. did before yeah. he but married then it's a sense of, Emily or yeah Kitty. But then during the allegations, it's more of a sense of shame and yeah, like when he's in the office because he did like, go back to her. Yeah, he did go back to her he while he her. was with yeah. Kitty. He loved multiple women at the same time. Yeah. And, and that's what yeah. Kitty portrays, like her hate for that part of yeah. him. Well, yeah. but also the thing with Kitty is that, that I think Oppenheimer was her fifth husband. Yeah, she had really? a ton of, she yeah. talked she about, she talked about she talk, it. Was, uh, yeah, she talked when about When they're yeah. on horseback and they're like, this in guy, New Mexico. And then this guy, like Jean, or uh, Kitty had a lot she, of men she, in her life, yeah, too. Yeah, she was a, you know, a little bit of a player, it seems like. But It, then it was very toxic, was, too. Like, when she says, like, can you adopt these kids? It, like, they were yes. terrible what parents. Dude, they were awful. They were awful. Yeah. Oh. So don't take notes from them. But then again, <laughs> like, if you, if, if you think about, like, like Oppenheimer, there, there, like, there, there's, a, there's a part in American Prometheus where he has his daughter, and mm-hmm. I don't think he sees her for four months, Whoa. like, right when he has her. Whoa. He just doesn't think about well, it. Well, that was like in the in the film where you know, like the baby's constantly crying, and he yeah, goes he, in and Kitty's like, it "Aren't you gonna see her?" I've been doing this all day. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that's she's what just said. drunk out of her mind, and yeah, yeah. I mean, I, Emily I'm, Blunt was perfect, oh, dude. I love was. that she performance. Was, I think she, those she, looks she, that she, she think, gives. She's got. Yes. I think she's gonna get nominated, and they she all might will. win. She might win for best supporting. RDJ is gonna. Who, RDJ probably who too. On on the register of movies today, mm. anything that's coming out or has come out will even contend with this movie. That's uh, yeah. That's what I'm. Thinking. Name one. I'm trying. I'm, I, I'm thinking that Joaquin Phoenix will get that for the Napoleon Ridley yeah. Scott. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. Does, come out. that does come Killers out. Killers of the Flower shit. Moon, and then the Killer oh, David Fincher. Oh, yeah. This year. Killers you, of the Flower Moon. Did you guys see the trailer for to what? The Exorcist before? Yes. Oh snap! Jesus Christ! Oh yeah, that, right dude, before. Dude, that was so oh, god. god. Wow, y'all really blew out the mic. I'm sorry. Here. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was that, awful. Uh, I was, that, that deserved dude. it, bro. That, I, that, I just that remembered that. Shoes. Yeah. I was like, stop it! I know that was. I mean, I guess Barbie is another. Nomination, Not, nah, bro. Set deck. You think Kate, production? You think, um, Ryan Gosling will get nominated. Maybe, maybe, maybe supporting the Sigma. actor. I can see the song maybe getting yeah. a, a nomination, kind of like the Lego Movie or uh, the Mario Movie got yeah. nominated with it. I, I can yeah, see yeah. that Pro- I can, probably. Maybe, same. Maybe. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. But no. So again, those are movies. Oppenheimer's. Yeah. Oppenheimer movie. is. That's, I'm a cinema, not <laughs> yeah, just a movie. That, yeah, that's it's an experience. It's an experience. What Scorsese would say was like, that's cinema. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. no, so let's, so, all right, so we're going, so going back to the film with showing like the downfall basically of this genius, the madness, you know, so like he obviously is going. Downfall. Yeah, the downfall too. Like you know, like the this destruction is the, of him. This is the father of the atomic the bomb. Deteriorating of his reputation. Yeah, yeah like the, yeah, exactly. That's the, crum- a good point. the crumble. The crumble of mm. of his 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 power, basically. You know, like these guys attacking his personal life. Like you know, like oh, so you were still you had an affair with Gene Tatlock. Well, what, they, they used that heavily. They used the him to make the bomb, and then they destroyed him. Yeah, like they, exactly. They just dumped him off right after without they made him. It. Yeah. Like. They were nothing. The thing yeah. that some people don't necessarily realize is that we, like, without Oppenheimer, we might not have solved the equation to build the bomb. Oppenheimer and then we would himself, have lost so many more soldiers. Well, here's another didn't thing. think it was possible. He, Nobody he, could solve Albert it. Albert Einstein only, thought it would never happen. Yes, no, okay, even him. If you read, like, the historical, like, Right before we were about to drop the bomb, our our guys were about to invade Japan, uh-huh. yeah. and, and we were about to all thousands, like, thousands dead. Of more yeah. lives so done. it's it's like the question, like their people or our people. And I hate right. to put it like that, but it's but, like their civilians or our or our guys that were drafted. Yeah, and I think it's, this is something that I might try to touch on on my podcast, maybe mm-hmm. later. Is like. Was it the right choice? Yeah. That, that, we're gonna, what other we're choice? Not, we're not going to talk about that right now. That's a very 
Long time. Well, yeah. I, actually, I don't, I don't know. know. What, let's let's so, so, we warned them twice. Let's we talk warned about them twice. Them. I don't think we truly warned. No, it said in the movie they didn't warn them. They didn't. Because they didn't. No. If you warn them, then they might suspect like an invasion uh-huh. or something. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, but, that's that is one. thing. I thought they gave them some like sort of warning. Uh, apparently, they the, did send the out second leaflets. one. They, they said that we are we're coming again if you don't surrender, and then they're like, "Fuck yeah. you." Yeah, and then the crazy general, the crazy general was like, "No," and then we just bombed them. What was that man's name? Uh, which, uh, Matt Japanese Damon's character? General? No, 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 the Japanese general. Oh, uh, oh, shoot, you're asking the wrong person, because I forget names. They go in one ear, out the other. But no, I like, okay, so... Oh, Yamashita Tomoyuki? That's Tomoyuki, it, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They call him Tiger of the Molea. Ooh, that sounds... Tiger of your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds, that sounds... He was pretty... a rough dude. He yeah. was. Yeah. Dude, all he of was them br- were... Yeah. Mussolini, he, he did not care Stalin... About his yeah. All of those guys were tough. Hey, how good was Matt Damon? Okay, that's a good question. <laughs> that, honestly, did y'all like him? So, no, I kind of mad. Matt him. Damon no. or RDJ? RDJ, yeah. bro. All right, yeah, so which one do you have? RDJ. Matt Damon. I, I, R- everybody has been saying think, uh, RDJ. I would say Matt Damon. Okay, so yeah. I'd say Matt Damon. Yeah. And so for the reason is, mm. um, I'd say Matt Damon only because I still felt He had his RDJ. back to the very end. I, I, well, yeah. that, but I, I still feel like Robert Downey Jr. still had a sense of Robert Downey Jr. Yes, exactly. Within, yeah. within like the walk, he was, I don't, I just the felt, Lewis, yeah. You no, for, no, the hand That's movements. a good point. He had it, he, a good point. You know he how still he, does had, the he stuff? still always had his head Exactly the same really, as like Zodiac. Have y'all seen Zodiac? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was like that. He, he still had too much yeah. suave within his performance. He, That's actually know, a really good point. I think he kind of acted like, you know, remember when he argues with uh, Captain, Captain America, America. Yeah. he kind of had that pizzazz. Exactly. Because he, he, he's no. like, you weren't there during Civil War. I gave him the power. What, was, that, <laughs> was that pretty decent, <laughs> Robert? No, no, that sounded, oh, like, not bad. That sounded like Walter White, bro. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, well, well, we'll do that later. <laughs> Whenever we get Brian actually on. <laughs> Most of the other characters, though, you forget it's them. Yeah, like that's what I'm yeah. saying with Matt yeah. Damon. Ra- so, Rami Malek, I love that. Oh, dude, he was so good Rami at Malik. David. You at see David the Hill. back of his head so much, and then you're like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was oh, a Mr. Rami. And when yeah. he, re- re- like, when that reveal, it's like, oh, What's shit. Freddie Mercury doing in here? And, and Jacob was talking about, like, the way he talks is yeah. kind of cool. He always, yeah. he always, he always has, does like, the little, a little bit of, like, Like know, in Mr. Robot, it, yeah. 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 Dude, still haven't seen so, that shine. No, it's so good. It's okay. I haven't either. I just, I was like, what's Freddie Mercury doing in this? <laughs> but no, did he win the Oscar for Freddie Mercury? He did. I'm pretty sure. I think he. Yeah. Pretty sure. I need to go back to 2018. 2000, yeah, 18. Yeah. No, he won it for he uh, was Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Freddie, Freddie Mercury. Mercury. So Freddie Mercury is the lead singer of a band yeah, called Queen. Queen. <laughs> Very big. I know what the, how how po- how illiterate. <laughs> well, he said Freddie Mercury. Not, He's like, no, no, yeah. Bohemian Rhapsody. They're, they're the ones. They're, <laughs> I'm the, not ones, illiterate. they're, they're me, the ones. They're not pop culture illiterate. They're the ones that sing me. "Sympathy for the Devil." That that's that's who. That was a joke. That's rolling. Am I still? <laughs> is this true? None of you guys were alive when uh, uh, September 11th happened. I I was not alive. I was just ta- we were talking about this today. He, he was in the womb. It was two months. I was late. in the womb in New York. I was a junior in high school. Bro, you are old. No, Shut yes. up. <laughs> you st- hey, you still you, you look like you're twenty. Dude, mid-20s. I thought he was twenty five. He was looking fresh. You, you look like a few <laughs> years you older than up me. Looking good. You look like yeah. You look like a, a a slightly older version of me as like a sexy <laughs> Mr. Clean. I what what <laughs> I've what I've come to terms with is I'm a good looking version of Paul Shear. Hmm. You guys know who Paul Shear is? No, Paul Shear. Wait, no clue. look him up. You're gonna laugh your ass off. He's the guy from uh, the League. The he's, he's the shaved head uh, comedian. Okay. No, you, you gotta turn crazy. this. <laughs> I'm a good looking version of Paul. Yeah, Shearer. that's true. That's true. That is, because I, I, that. I, I also have my head shaved, and yeah. so yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Okay. So what were we talking about? Oh, right, so Matt Damon. <laughs> but, yeah. Matt Damon. All right. So Matt Damon, he lost himself in this role. Totally. Like. Robert Downey Jr., as much as I love him, he always brings like he a... He always brings a little Robert... He, yeah. He always brings a part of himself to all the roles. Mm-hmm. That's why we love him. But that's why I love Matt Damon is because like, you know, like, oh, that's not Will Hunting, you know? Like, that's not Carol Shelby from, you know, throwback to our last podcast. That's, that's Leslie Groves. Yeah, like... That's who it... Well, that's, that's I like him. that take a yeah. lot. Yeah, I like, like that, yeah. That's, that, not, that's not Matt Damon. That's not Jason that's Bourne. That's the general who well, was Well, and I think that's yeah, why exactly. Killian does such a good job, because that's Oppenheimer. Yeah, that, yeah exactly. It's not Killian Murphy. That is Oppenheimer. actually yeah, yeah, Oppenheimer. You're not like, oh, that's a dude from... 
from Sunshine. Or Sunshine, Peaky Blinders, Peaky Blinders yeah. Scarecrow. All right, well, that brings me to another question that I have now. Is Killian Murphy attached to Oppenheimer now? Like, is Ooh. if we see any movie... It's kind of like... It's, what do you I mean? From, not right, yet. So not any yet. future movie, like film or TV show... Like, like that's if, a dude from Oppenheimer. Is, is that... Like, that's no, dude, yeah. No, that's no, no, no. Mean. What I mean is... Close. But what I mean is... Like, when we watch a movie from now on, Killian Murphy is in it. Kill- is that Oppenheimer? Yes. Ooh, it's, like, he dude, acts the same. I don't like, think... Like, no, no, like, no, no. So you don't think? Don't, no, because that's that's why he's such a good actor. He can yeah. be Oppenheimer. I mean, he can be... He technically is Oppenheimer he can be in Thomas Sunshine, because that's kind yeah. of the he same. He can be Scarecrow. Yeah. He's versatile. Now, yeah. so I had one person say that he is like Elvis and Austin Butler, which is not true. The, the, mm. That is... To be fair, you're, I feel you're like making the comparison that Austin no, 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 Butler is no, 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 always, no, no, always no, no, Elvis. No, 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 I'm oh. not making. I'm oh. saying that is not the case. That you're oh. saying Elvis. So Austin Butler lost himself in too Elvis. much into Cillian Elvis. Cillian did not. Cillian, you're right. <laughs> keep saying. Bro, keep saying. What am I saying? Cillian. Cillian. It's Cillian. It's Cillian. You're good. Wait, it's, just, it's all good. Just think about it with a K. Yeah, Cillian. It's all good. It's an Irish name. Anyway, so. Like, no, so y'all don't think that Killian has lost himself into the role too much, which I feel like well, he for, did. For this movie, for but movie. I think we can still enjoy him in, in other... I think he, I think we're not going to be able to tell until he drops another one. I, mean, I yeah. think we he, need to he, see he, the, he, another one. He lived off of almonds for 50 days. You, when <laughs> like, you watch, like, if you yeah. watch 28 no. Days Later, if I don't know if you guys have ever I seen still that. still need to watch oh. that. Ar- Alex you Ryan's, haven't seen... I shut up. Yeah, I know. Jacob! I know, I know, I know, I know. That movie changed zombies. We'll have to do a, a whole thing on we that do one. We do need to do that. That's, that's Alex Garland, Danny Boyle. Mm. Look, I'm, I'm, look, I have a list that I'm building up, and that's what... <laughs> look, you made me watch Sunshine, which I appreciated, you know, especially... I think, isn't that the, the, the notes list that you share with me all the time? I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm pretty sure. Um, but, okay, so, like, Robert Downey Jr., I mean, so we're talking about, like, all these historical figures that have, you know, like... We, I didn't know who, what is it, what's his name again, Louis Strauss? Louis Strauss, yeah, he's right. the general. Strauss. Yeah, I didn't realize, like, you know, like, I did not know about him, and then, like, to be honest, did any of y'all, like, re- were y'all really familiar about R- Julius Robert Oppenheimer? No. yes. So, y- he was. I know you were. We, I know we, you were. The whole world <laughs> knows that you were. Yeah. So Obsessed. You, you've, you've, Obsessed. You've, so, you've clarified that. So, so, here's where I'll be honest. I forgot he existed. <laughs> so I, I knew... I knew he was, you know, the father of the atomic bomb, you know. I didn't know much else about him. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Like, I really didn't Here's know one too much. strange thing I noticed, and I've still been trying to find if someone else really picked up on this, and I haven't. Um, a unique um, visual that I really picked up on is if you ever go down the rabbit hole and look at psychedelic art, so a lot of art that was done during that time, like the psychedelic eras, they make some crazy art. So like the um, if if you guys listen to Tool, a lot of their album covers, there's they're they're it's artwork done under psychedelic drugs. Yeah. And there's crazy, crazy artwork that you can do and stuff like that. There are shots in the opening scene where it shows yeah, him in his it's suit. That, it's that weird face thing. I made connections with art that I've seen that I had no idea that that was Oppenheimer. Really? And he really? was the... Because when psychedelics were this huge thing, the atomic era was also happening at the exact same time. So they there's a lot of art that really shows off who Oppenheimer was in that era. And I picked up on that like 20 or 30 minutes huh. in. I was like, holy shit. And it, it's, it's just visually beautiful. But like... Huh. I think you're right, and I think that's why Christopher Nolan chose to tell this story, yeah. is that very few people know who this is. Yeah. My parents saw the trailer, they're like, who the hell's Oppenheimer? And I'm like... <laughs> yeah, well, like, that's why, like, I really appreciate, <laughs> especially, especially, like, you know, Christopher Nolan loves to, like, bring certain... Things to light. Things to light, you know? He's like, not telling common stories. He's no. telling stories that most people have no yep. idea who what, they are. Yeah. I it's mean, like, that's kind of important, because if you're telling something everyone knows, no one's going to give yeah. that too well, much of crap. Yeah, like, well, like, Dunkirk. Yeah. Like, for example, like, kn- like... Did any of us... I, did you guys know that I knew story? the Battle of Dunkirk, I, and that's I knew, I knew I was yeah. familiar with it, but I didn't know, like... Well, and he's he from... Lot, yeah. He's from London. Yeah. And so he might have had... Like that knowledge in his head, kind of like we know about Pearl Harbor, because like yeah, that's, exactly. like, that's here. But he brought that to yeah, America. We know like, that yeah. history and that part of war. I didn't know what Dunkirk was. Yeah, and, and, until the movie. Yeah. So, all right. So, 
I'm totally blanking on like the the name. Let's not skirt around the fact that this movie also brought to light what Oppenheimer brought from Europe to America. Like oh, yeah, and the, the knowledge, and the quantum physics. Yeah, like from he brought quantum he, physics. Yeah, he, well, because quantum theory had just come out, and, and it wasn't anywhere near. America. If you guys want to lose your mind, read any book, an intro book. the The rules that apply in the quantum realm are, are they they break the laws of physics. It's yeah, it's like wonky. waves can. It's like he said, like light can exist, or something can exist as waves. Oh, yeah, and yeah, particles at, at the yeah. same time. Yeah, yeah. waves and particles. So that that's, make any that's sense, where parallel universes come from. I don't want to get into this Ant Man stuff, please. And well, then if you look at it, it also changes again. It's yeah. it's crazy. The like, quantum everything well, is insane. We'll, we'll have to go on that on Samuel's podcast. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna have to get into the logistics of all yeah. of this random shit. So like. That's but like that's another fact of this film is like Oppenheimer brought so many theories from Europe to America like you know like honestly like that's well that that's was one of the landed, one is, of the reasons that they were they the, that they came is that Hitler was grabbing so Werner Werner yeah, Heisenberg one of the guys yeah, was Werner. like how long have you been uh, br- uh British and he was like ever since Hitler kicked yeah. me out. They, yeah. Germany. Because Hitler yeah. wanted to make the oh, bomb. No, that was the rat who was with the Soviets. Yeah. yeah. He oh, was the guy yes. who was working okay. with the Soviets. I didn't because yeah. he says that after the fact. The yeah. reason that this story right. existed technically is because of Hitler and the Nazis, is that yeah. Hitler wanted to make a bomb. No one ever thought about this before that. And right. that's when that's the whole scene in the movie where he's like, he's like 18 months. He's like, how could you possibly know that? And he's yeah. like, because all of my friends are there, and I need to bring them all here. Because and Niels Bohr came to it later. If you go mm-hmm. down what quantum is, one of the the particles are named after him. Like the, all of those scientists are like the greatest minds of history. So like the yeah. founding fathers of quantum physics. Uh, yes. And what is cool yes. is the fact that they were all Jewish. Now that, that was yes. another yes. part. Yes. I, I mean, oh, think about yeah. it. Oppenhe- Oppenheimer could have been a, in a concentration camp. Yes. Yeah. He could have. He, he could have been stuck in Germany. Wow. And it could have gone sideways. We might never have seen the atom bomb. We could have had World War II for the next two years. Yeah, exactly. And that like, that's they were so forced cool. to do something because of the fear of the Nazis Honestly, and all that. Yeah. I bet you the Nazis, had he not gotten out of Germany, they probably would have used him. Yeah. They pro- that that could have yeah. possibly... Yeah, like that could have been the Dude. end. And know, then they yeah. could have... Heisenberg him. probably would have solved it. And so here's the interesting... There's, I'll, I'll say this one thing about the, the historical fact of what happened. The bomb, he had not solved it. Mm-hmm. The Germans surrendered because Hitler killed himself. So yeah. the Germans were out of yeah. the war. The bomb, they hadn't solved it yet. They yeah. still made it. They still made it. They still were like, no, because no, no, we had, need to do this. It was a world war. And so we had a, these right. other forces. Jap- still Japan attack- didn't want. So like we still made the bomb even though technically the war was over. Yeah. It was pretty much over. I mean, it was like, over no, until I don't know. There was still America some, realized a lot of fighting on the Pacific. Well, yeah, so yeah. Japan Peter, was still part of it, but, I know, they, but they were they were the main player. Like, yeah, it was it's, Germany. It's game over. Yeah, yeah America but, was basically put into a corner where we had to we had, we just had to fight. Like Japan, the kamikaze like idea of Japan was like their last leg. That was a desperate attempt. Like these people were crazy. They were willing to kill themselves yeah, for the greater I, yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. And I think that Believed like cause, yeah. that is very scary for America because like mm. it's either we have to send in more people to try to kill people who are willing to die, right. or we can we can hit them once and then we'll hit them again. We'll hit them with a one-two yeah. combo and we will make sure <laughs> that you do not f. With America. Yeah. Did you like, guys find you know it? What's, you know what's cool? I watched, in preparation for this movie, I watched Hacksaw Ridge. Oh. Great movie. Which is about the Battle of, Oca- what's it called? Okinawa? I, I can't, o- I'm Okinawa? A, I'm, yeah. Okinawa. Okinawa. And it was Wish like, showed how brutal and like vicious the oh, Japanese yeah, soldiers dude. were. They I, were just I've going with some... grenades. And yeah. just like. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. They, like uh, some of the prisoners would like strap themselves yeah. with grenades. Strap themselves with grenades and just go in. And that's how the main character... Yeah, that's exactly. how the main yeah. character got hurt. Y'all, y'all made Taylor sad. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I know. So, no, there's okay. still so jarred from well, this, well, no, from this movie, movie too. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> there's one scene where this guy, the Japanese soldier, went in with a grenade, put it to the American soldier's chest, and just grabbed them, and then they just both just wow. Well, yeah, they, 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 uh, yeah, they made that Rich. movie very gory. They wanted to make sure that you could that really take a glass. Sony, Sony, it was really good. I really like Sony. Finish. I like Mr. Andrew Garfield. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, so guys, so... Where's the Rizzler? <laughs> so, the, so the, 
let's think about so the last section of like the politics we've talked a little bit of it of them basically trying to steal the like especially Louis Strauss trying to steal the credit from Oppenheimer basically and him getting angry about him getting all this fame. yeah so do you okay so hold on do you guys know what Strauss's end goal was do you know why he was doing this it's like I was trying to figure that out like it's not in the movie you have to you have to have read the book so he was trying to get a senate seat he was running for senate oh and he oh, wanted that's what I said. He seat. lost his seat yeah, at the cabinet like because, because of, of Remy Malek. That's what he said yeah. at the end. Yeah, 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 because yeah. of David yes. Hill. So, um, he was basically what, trying what? to say, I'm the white knight. Robert Downey Jr. was jealous yeah. of Oppenheimer because yeah, of the relationship that he him. had with, with Einstein. And, and Oppenheimer yeah. humiliated him a, yeah. a few times. Yeah. And he's just like, fuck this guy. And he decided to just destroy <laughs> this man's life. Just balls to the wall. Just, just all destroy. And you know what I really, you know what I really liked watching. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Alden in uh, Aaron Reich. Aaron Reich. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, who he was played good. Solo. Yeah. I liked. He oh, wasn't yeah, a big yeah, part, good. but he had a really good chunk. I really as did the like Senate him. Aid. I really liked him. I then. did like that character. So, so yeah. So he was trying to get a Senate seat, and and at, at the same time, he wanted to take away. Um, the 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 security access that Oppenheimer had uh, yeah. because the Atomic Commission was was getting bigger and they were making decisions about the hydrogen bomb and he's like we need Oppenheimer out of this he, we need him gone so they, they was trying to revoke his because security. he was against yeah. it yes. he was against it being built because so of that what we that's earlier. really what the last part of the movie is is that in an insanely convoluted crazily complicated way yeah yeah mm. no so and you can't really make that straightforward. Because there's so much little detail. It's a whole movie by itself. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Yeah, this I have heard a few people say this just in the reviews that I found, and it, it's true. This is two movies put, put into put one, into one. Yeah. but done in in like a seamless way. I see. And I they did. connected it perfectly. And here's the yeah. thing that I will say, and I've been I need to say this before I forget. Anyone who complains about this movie being too long, you're stupid. And here's it's why. It's very hard. Uh, here's I why. Think here's it's why. Too long. Here's why. Let's, okay. let's hear Mel. Okay. Because. You okay? Most movies, what two hours, two and a half sometimes, yeah. right? And we're we're kind of okay with that. We, no one really bitches about a movie that long. You're gonna bitch that you can't sit there for another thirty minutes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, thirty extra minutes! But then you're gonna go home and watch eight episodes of Vanderpump Rules straight. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's crazy. Really? Good point. Good or, point. or whatever show you're into. Everyone yeah. binge watches shows for hours and hours and on end. It's yeah, yeah, you're that's at why home. I get scared you of shows. You shouldn't be whining about a three hour. Yes, movie. exactly. This and this that's is a, the greatest experience you will ever have in a movie. This is so, meant for people who truly care. So yes. what? What I'm hearing is, and how I did feel about it. I mean, yes. My first initial thought was, this movie was too long, right? But then looking back, like the it really was like it didn't have any air bubbles really in it. No, like the I didn't. Pa- I the didn't pacing was no, pretty no, good no, no, for no. the pacing movie. was it like you're constantly steady, you're steadily going. There's not really many breaks. And then if too. it gets calm, let's have another panic attack. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's, that's a, who's that's a good who's point. the guy? What, you're gonna have to look up his name. The I guy like, yeah, that I, was asking him the questions. He's a huge actor. Oh, Jason Clark. Jason that, Clark. Jason Clark. I always that's forget the guy's name. He did a good job. He did do a phenomenal job. I wanted to punch him in the face, dude. Yeah, he, he has had a the very most punchable face, face, dude. He had the most punchable face since Leo Beebe in Ford vs. Ferrari. Yeah. <laughs> he had a worse punchable face than that man. Dude, he, I wanted to jump into the screen yeah. and strangle the man. Yeah, and that that just plays of how good of a job he did. He, he, did. Did. he also as, played as the as bad guy in White House Down in 2013. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was right. a good movie. Oh, he, he's, he's a great actor. I'm a very I really like They made him look very old in the movie. He looked they did. They made him look very, they made him look very 60s. Well, and the fact that you find out. Who hired him? 40s. Robert Downey Jr. Yep. was the yeah, guy that hired made. him, and yeah. it was all connected. It, yeah. it was just this little ploy just to get off. And I him. loved how Kitty <laughs> made him so angry, like how she a- answered so calmly during the she investigation. The oh, on. my God. She, that, that she was did so amazing. beautiful. She, did she turned the questions against him. The looks that she gave him during that 60-second little interaction yeah. are looks that I hope a human never gives me. Yeah. Just... Oh, and at the no, very end, at the very you. end, whenever they showed Oppenheimer as like an old man, like a really old no, man, when she oh, looked really at no, the, the Edward Teller, or, Edward Teller, yeah, yeah. Edward Teller. No, that uh, look, that, 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 that interaction. Well, was really so after good. he, so the, the point 
I think maybe you were trying to make is that so Edward Teller shook Oppenheimer's hand yep. after he was interrogated, yep. and she's like, "You shook his fucking hand? Yeah. What? Yeah, that was, and that was a huge part of the mo- a huge part of the of the book. She was so and then pissed at the about very it. end when he sees them after like fifteen years yeah. and they're old men. Yeah, she doesn't shake. She doesn't shake it. She, she gives him yeah, that look. She, however long, she won't shake oh. his hand. She's like, <laughs> oh. nope. Like, go to hell. Like, yeah, that, exactly. She gives it that. That is the perfect. That look. is yeah. She, she it was definitely a go to hell look mm-hmm. and. I think only like Emily Blunt can give it to she, the, like that. Bro, face. Was, she oh. went from Mary that Poppins exp- to oh, like yeah. serial yeah. killer. It's like, it's like you're <laughs> definitely. Have you guys have you guys ever heard about just one random story of the scene in a quiet place? So you guys seen a quiet place, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So you haven't seen a quiet no. place? All right, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ruin this for you. Okay, fine. So there, there's a scene. Well, I guess this doesn't really ruin anything. There's a scene where she's in like a bathtub. And the oh, creatures yeah. in the oh, house, yeah. and she has to be quiet because, like, that's the whole thing. And she's giving birth, and she goes into she's labor at oh this gosh, at the time, and so she she's like crying, but she can't make a, she can't make a sound. Mm-hmm. Dude, on Imagine set, that. on set, they shoot it one take. Ten seconds later, she's like, "What's for lunch?" She just like jumps right out of it, like nothing. I love her. That's crazy. She, she can is, like flip the switch. She's you a terrifying be human. She's she's such a babe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, so guys, John John so Krasinski's got to hold that down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hearing her on a on a podcast, I love. She sounds like an actual doll too. Like just like the person you would want to like. The scary kind of doll or the fine. No, like, like just I've had a doll. crush on like, her for years. She's no, yeah, she's like beautiful. the kind of lady, like the kind of woman you would want to like go hang out with. Like you would want to call her like your aunt, something like that. Like sure. the bro That's with facts. the like the bro That's with facts. the ponytail. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh sure. So guys, so all right, so let's all right. The the main takeaway, the soul wrecker, if you will, of this film. Mm-hmm. All right. The the idea of having having created this this fire, handing the gun to the baby, if you will. Yeah. Of it's like a good analogy. Yeah, handing this gun Not to the baby. Candy, like the gun. The gun, like <laughs> You know, like, who who knows if this baby is going to pull this trigger Mm -hmm. or not. Like, that's what this is. Yeah, exactly. That's That's what this is about is we've made these atomic weapons, right, that can end a civilization if you really want. And and the planet if you want. You know, that's what it ended on watching, like... They had the shot where the f- where the fire is slowly burning down yeah. the earth at the very end, which you know hasn't didn't happen. But, but that, that's what Oppenheimer yeah. thinks can happen. Yes. Yeah, and well, that's 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 his mind. That that's that is a reality that can happen. Can happen. I challenge you guys or, or anyone listening or, or watching this to just the power of that bomb is is the power of the sun. Yeah. It's mm. literally how the sun works. Yeah. The sun is a giant nuclear bomb that's yeah. constantly going off. Yeah. And we harness that. And so like if you look in modern day into a 33 pound super weapon. Well, yeah. we're yeah. looking at doing um uh fissionable nuclear um Fissionable nuclear reactors, which would yeah. have unlimited energy for the entire world. We haven't solved it yet. We're incredibly close. But, like, the power that that that, that is is so insane. They talked about it's, that. It's crazy. In, in The Saint with Val Kimmer. Have you seen that movie? Not that one. That's a great mm. movie. I haven't seen that one in a watch. long time. That's we a good one, though. Classic that. movie. That would be have a to great check it out. one. I like Val Kilmer. But to really hone in on, like, the message is that, like, we—, we, we and just like how I feel about this movie, like after after the bomb goes off, the the thought I kept thinking about because I, I knew we were going to come do this was like yeah. whether you liked this movie or not, you cannot undo the experience of seeing it. It's powerful. Yeah. It, it is it, so powerful. The most yeah. mind boggling experience I think any of us have had in a cinema. It's probably my yeah, yeah probably my I favorite. Think, no question. I think it is saved. I think it's saved cinema in a way. Like yeah. the cinema. Since yeah. COVID has plummeted, yeah. I would say I it has plummeted. I totally agree. And maybe this is one of the reasons he made the movie is to bring people it. back into the cinema. Because you, if you don't watch this movie in cinema, you're missing like yeah. the good. It's half not of gonna it. give the vibe. Like I don't like. I'm gonna disdain. You're like oh, I saw it at home. Mm-mm. I've it's watched crazy. Interstellar it probably four hundred times. Oh. I've literally seen this movie it's no, more it's than nothing any other like, movie. It's nothing like the cinema. 
Yeah. You can't. It's, uh, it's nothing like the cinema. I will still watch Oppenheimer, obviously, when it comes out digitally and stuff. I'll watch it 6,000 yeah. more times. But like, I'd rather rent out a theater the than watch it. <laughs> I need story, headphones yeah. like this, and I need to like sit on a subwoofer and just like. <laughs> <I'm> just <feeling. laughs> yeah, it'd be the only way to like. Yeah. To, uh, to, to, yeah. Pretty oh much. Gosh. No, yeah. gentlemen, so that's, that's a good like wrap on like the discussion of like that film so y'all may like go into some tidbits on the production and we're gonna do some yeah, categories yeah, yeah. yep let's do good. it all right nice little wrap up nice little wrap up that all right and then i did have this one last note and just one last any, note if, for anything that we miss out it's because like we can't tell everything about this, this you have to you see have to see it. it you can't talk enough then about you it. can have your personal opinions we are here to give ours they might not be yours you have to see it's this just movie. like people it, it's 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 exactly like the people that saw the bomb yeah yeah they can only describe it so many ways this is the closest they'll it shook ever you get it to felt feeling. it's crazy okay all right but once you experience it you're like ha <laughs> it's like it's like it makes you think. It makes you question <sighs> reality that could be. Yeah, and like I hope, lots of I hope they leave it in theaters yeah. for a while. Do you lots remember how many years we themes. talked about Inception after that movie came out? Yeah, ex- well, that's no the- one shut up about it. The, the, yeah, it's been thirteen everyone years and talk we still can talk. Still about talking it. about it. The zeitgeist of the popularity of pop culture it with skits and making fun of it. Yeah. it was everywhere. Yeah. This movie will have a hundred times more impact. You think so? Yeah. Without no, question. also because it kind of tackles like a moral and like ethical kind of stance. Psychological. Yeah. yeah. Well, I so this was actually going to be my leave away with this is Christopher Nolan does such a good job with making you question everything and making you really think about what you just saw of yep. his. Yeah, that you can you can watch it a thousand different times and see it a thousand different ways. Like, I, okay, so I watched Barbie last night because we're recording that podcast tomorrow. tomorrow. So. Great movie. Even through yeah, the movie. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. I'm, like, I was enjoying the it. The connections of all the past movies. I don't know if y'all seen Mission Impossible. Y'all should go see it. That's oh, another You've seen it? Is it good? I, just, I saw the day come out. Um, yeah. It left on... See, we've had so many cliffhangers. It left on the best cl- cliffhanger this year. Good. Fast X was, ter- was terrible cliffhanger. <laughs> Across the spiders. Sa- we have Sound to have, of Freedom. We have to wait five I like years. Sound of Freedom. I haven't that. seen Spider Man either. I, I need to see that one. Hey, bro. Like, but <laughs> I, I, would, I don't know. Bro, I, so, bet, you been, I, have been, I bet you've been spoiled, spoiled by social media. A few things, yeah. It, it, anyway. So, what I was going to say is, even through Barbie, I was still thinking about this film. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I was still yeah. like. Uh, okay, you, you, you've met Riley. Yeah. My, my, yeah. She is obsessed with Barbie. Yeah. She literally wore her Barbie outfit. I can I can to see. It, 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 Bro, we were about to pull up in the suits. We were going to look majestic. Did you guys like So wait, you 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 guys haven't seen Barbie? I he has, we both have. Yeah. Was everyone wearing pink in the yes. theater? I was wearing a pink I have talked to people shirt. all over the country, just friends and family. Everyone's just yeah. decked out in pink. It's, it's I love surpassed. that. I surpassed this. Now, I do think Oppenheimer will not have as big of a box office cuz not Barbie, yet. Ha- Barbie has more of a fan base, but once you let Oppenheimer marinate, it, it will crush Barbie. Yeah. I'm, okay, here. Definitely. I'm going to make my prediction, and I guarantee you I'm right. I'm usually pretty good at guessing this. Barbie will destroy opening weekend. No, no yeah. question. Because yeah, it's a wider audience. It already, yeah. it already is. Like, I was looking at the numbers You're going to have a lot really. more kids and Once families. the word comes out about what Oppenheimer is, people are going to run to yeah. this, the movie. Some people didn't know what I what it I was I literally I had to them. run to the movie. I was late. I thought it was, I was a day late. later. He did, 40 no, minutes being, early. Yeah. There you Just go. sitting there in my so the look, first one. Watching, watching all the si- horror movie trailers. In, bro. I was sitting in bed. I'm like, hey, are we watching Oppenheimer tomorrow? He's like, Blood, it's in 10 minutes. <laughs> I jumped out of my bed. I'm like, I can't miss any of this. Because if I miss the first 15 minutes, I missed some of the most important you part You did call me in a big panic. That was yeah, funny. I was like, I was like, yeah, just go call Jacob. Uh, yeah, I <laughs> yeah I, I, I'm not dealing with this. <laughs> I I was not thinking about like when the movie ended. So here's the one thing I'll say about the ending. Okay, of, of Oppenheimer. Yes. Okay. So the movie ended. I'm sitting there with the credits. Out of the respect for the crew, I, I've I've been that way since I was five. And five. I'm serious. Dang. I have I movies are my I am a major cinephile. Um. Finish the credits. I had a very, very hard time speaking mm-hmm. afterwards. I couldn't look Riley in the eyes even. Good and the point. second I got into the car to drive home, I uncontrollably started to cry. And wow. I, I could wow. stop. I couldn't Dang, stop. Bro. Dang. She's like, are you okay? And I'm like, no. It just ruined me. Wow. And I was like, I don't want to go see it again. Like Ru- now it is. I, I do. Mean, what do you mean by ru- ruined and Like what it way? just affected just them really. Like, yeah, emotionally. I think I'm a really 
big empath. I think that like if 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 you share a terrible story, remember the night that we had on set, we're sitting there yeah, for yeah. three and a half hours, and just you're telling me about your life. Like I feel like when people tell me stories about them you really, or whatnot, you really I can in. really feel it. Yeah, and I think that's what Nolan was trying to do with this because of the perspective that he wanted to show you is to what. Oppenheimer's life was. Yeah, I felt how that. hard it is. Yeah, I how felt hard it that. was. Just that terrible burden that he had to carry for the rest of his life. And that's what yeah. I liked about the Truman scene when Truman's like, "You didn't have any blood on your hand." Shut up. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah, he did. He built the bomb that you you and all, word you for yeah. word he, he that was it. exactly played, yeah. what they said in quick, real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he said, "Get this man out of my office." Yeah. He's like, Truman he's hated Oppenheimer. Wow. Uh huh. That's insane. Mm. Hated him. He ended the war for you. You yeah. should be thanking. He thought yeah. he was such a pussy. He taught. He he would make fun of him all the time, and he that's, was just like that little baby. That's yeah. insane. <laughs> yeah, he, he said he said that too. Imagine right. if he was a turncoat for the Soviets. Ooh, that would have been bad. a twist. So, then, tr- then Truman really is a Soviet. Then bomb. they would have had the bomb like that. To me, that's kind of proof that he wasn't. Is that if he was leaking info, the Russians would have had the bomb much sooner. Yeah. They got it way later. They yeah. How, when did they have their first? Yeah, I, look that up. I think it, their first big one was the Tsar bomb. Mm-hmm. I think it's T S A R. Yeah, that's a that's a and Russian t- leader makes sense. And here's what's crazy mm-hmm. too historically. There's wow, only they, been they had they just had a couple a first, years after uh, 1949 August 29th first Soviet test. In Damn. Do you guys Pakistan. know the only in in history the only times that we've ever used nuclear weapons. Are Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Only time. Yep. That's it. And that's that, how and that's the, how the groundbreaking those are. Still today. That's we've yeah. no one and everyone has nukes. No one's used them because they it's, know what they do. Yeah. Okay. It's been so, seventy eight years. Yep. So, yeah. And so uh ha, so yeah, so some tidbits, and actually that was one thing. This next August, sixth and ninth, mark the seventy eighth anniversary that Nagasaki and Hiroshima were destroyed. Mm. Uh, the only wow. two nuclear warheads that were ever launched in warfare. And the fat go, man and the little boy. We've yep. tested thousands, but we've yeah. never. Those are the only times that to, have been to kill used. people. And here's what's crazy: in the book, there's chapters about this, about how, how they, many. Well, no, how they chose those cities. Oh yeah, they yeah, had they, a they had a quick uh-huh. scene about that. So yeah, quick, Oppenheimer quick. knew where they were going to be dropped. He was he was one of like I think twelve people that knew where they were going to do yeah, it. Yeah, they mentioned that. And he kept saying he he would be sitting there just. He's like those little people, those poor little people. No, he would just the scene lose his when mind. he has to sit in front of the slideshow of all the charred bodies, oh. yeah. when it zooms in on his face he, after the he, fact, he drops, and, and then you see head. him yeah. slowly close his eyes. Was, like, yeah, those. As very far as I know, the Killian reason well. that they chose those two places there was there was no military bases there. Right. They are they're perfectly flat. And they wanted the optimal the perfect effect. Size cities to yeah, perfect the perfect size. cities to test the bomb because again we've that's never crazy. seen that's, how it's gonna happen. That's right. dark, bro. right? Right? That's just a bunch of civilians. And now. we did that. Yeah. Was it the Germans or Japan? Like everyone did terrible things. We did that. America. They, they, they woke you know? up a sleeping giant. America. Gi- they woke like, up a sleeping giant. As yeah, it was ma- said. yeah, America. Th- uh, like, that's an actual quote from uh, I want to say the guy the. Uh, and that goes to show like. How our countries always have a dark side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, gentlemen, so in order for the black and white sections of the film to be shot in some quality as the re- the same quality as the rest of the film, Kodak, along with Christopher Nolan, developed the first ever black and white film stock for IMAX. It, wow, there was a really? lot of yeah. IMAX. So they they did that. They also built an extension on where the reel sits. Mm-hmm. So there's a really cool video that IMAX put out where it shows the machine that grabs the film, like it's the projector, mm-hmm. and the reel that holds the film that pulls it in, like it 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 turns this way, and the projector. We've always had oh, like I've this seen much the video space. Where he... There is like an eighth of a, a half of an inch left, and that's why IMAX is like you can't do anything bigger because it, yeah. we can't hold the film. Yeah, because yeah, you see a you see. Have I see, y'all seen the video I, I, where he's with the film? It's yeah, so yeah. I, long. No, I saw this funny video. It's like of this twelve guy miles carting, long. Carting the film, at, yeah, it's like twelve miles. And he has like <laughs> that's this much. Like it's insane. <laughs> that is insane. For, yeah, just, but yeah, they made brand new black and white film stock that had never insane. been made. Wow, yeah. that's, that's pretty. That's, that's cool. That's cool. It's so cool. Shows what Christopher Nolan will do. For well, and 
for the using craft. an IMAX, like how how intimate were some of those shots? Like, you were yeah. so no, really. close. no, and Samuel even mentioned it during the film. He's like, if you look close enough, you can kind of see that it was like seventy millimeters. Yeah, you, you could see, see the graphic little yeah. stuff, the little oh, grain. You, know, you can made it seem the, like nineteen sixty. Uh-huh. I don't you, know, or forty, nineteen forty. It made, just made it feel yeah. like you were back in the. You could I, feel the emotion within it. Yeah. Like exactly. A lot a, more. A little tidbit. Uh, the film. It weighed six hundred pounds. <laughs> I think it came oh in. Oh my gosh! Wow. I think it came in twelve boxes of film, and then they assemble it on the reel. Yeah. That is insane. Yeah, I love when film like that. Directors are starting to revert back to film. Yep. Producers Charles Roven pitched the film to writer and director Christopher Nolan and producer Emma Thomas by telling them about the biographical f- book American Prometheus. Do you know? On that, who gave him the book? Let me finish. Oh, uh, okay. Intrigued, right. Let him cook. <laughs> intrigued by the book, asked to read it, what helped Nolan to make the decision to direct the film was a book of Oppenheimer's speeches given to him by Robert Pattinson wow. at the rap party of Nolan's previous oh, movie. Oh, yeah, I heard yeah. about Robert Pattinson. <laughs> yeah, Batman, he, he, Batman he knew, came in with He gave him he the knew. book and a whole bunch of other books that were like his Oppenheimer's handwritten notes and his journals and all mm-hmm. this cool stuff. He's like... I'm present. surprised they didn't yeah. cast him for no. Well, I I, yeah. I, was, I watched Same. an interview and he was like, yeah, he's he's in demand these days. We couldn't get him. That's why. Yeah. That's just what he oh, said. That's why that Batman's is... the savior. Yes, sir. Oh. Um, let's see. So the second and consecutive collaboration between Christopher Nolan and composer Ludwig, yeah, Ludwig, Ludwig Göransson. Yeah. Right after Tenet. Why did we not? Frequent Nolan collaborator Hans Zimmer wasn't available since he was committed to the uh, to scores of Dune and Dune Part Two. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. Because of how I the score for no, Tenet I'm, I'm not is disappointed amazing. at yeah. all about Same. the uh, I'm the Han, score. I'm a super I'm, fan of Hans Zimmer. I've yeah. always been, and I'm a new fan of this guy. Yeah. But I'm, I'm a new. Go yeah. back and watch, or just when you're driving home, listen to the the score. Yeah, yeah. I I found myself so driving 115 and miles an hour on accident getting here because oh. I was so into the oh. the, the, the <laughs> if, if you listen to there's one of the. The, the the names of one of the songs is called Trinity. It's the one that goes off of yeah. the bomb. Trinity bomb, yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you can relive that through the score until it, you see it again. That's, that's did good. a couple that's other good, good ones. Did yeah. Black Panther, Central Intelligence. Oh, really? Yeah. Venom, good, yeah. All the Creeds. And yeah, Creeds and uh, uh, what what is it? Uh, Turning Red, which sucked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fruitvale Station. He did oh. that one too. Um, you most, better talk about the DP. Yeah, don't worry, we're getting there. So, mostly filmed in New Mexico. Um, this is Nolan's first film to be s- distributed by Warner, first to not be distributed by Warner Brothers since Memento. Was this an indie film? Uh, Warner this was Brothers uni- Universal. One of the reasons that he went is that he was they weren't they wouldn't pay him. Mm. Well, that, Talking about like the strike and stuff whoa, right now. Shoot, they're also, like you're not worth it. He's oh, yeah, like the film peace, strike. bitch. Also, he was also really pissed off at them because. They put Tenet straight to streaming, which he did not want oh, that's during COVID. Terrible. He like they didn't tell him like, hey, we're going straight to streaming on HBO Max, something like that. He's like, wait, what? No, yeah. you're not. They're like, too late. So he hate he. <laughs> was he's really not a big fan of Warner Brothers. Yeah. yeah. So I think he's just a little sour at them. But y'all just watch. So since it's Universal, watch this become an Oppenheimer ride at a Universal. Oh. <laughs> that's gonna get, be awesome. We get Oppenheimer. <laughs> we get bombed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So listen, yeah, that would be. I mean, there is a ride like I that. I would ride that. There is a oh, there's yeah. a ride. Uh, there is actually a ride. One more there. time. What? Yeah, I would totally. <laughs> there's a ride there where like fire shoots out at you and everything. Really? It's awesome. That's yeah. pretty cool. Dude, All right. I don't want to get charged. So some of Nolan's demands before uh, demands included a production budget of a hundred million and an equal marketing budget. A it theater- was just to pay the crew. It seems like. I mean, yeah, he much. paid like he paid like his main actors four million each. I, I mean, you, you have Gary that. Oldman, obviously, that comes through as yeah. Truman. Yeah, like they, he's cam- got to be expensive. Yeah. Cameo, just cameo. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They paid Emily Blunt four million. So, Killian, Killian. Hey, good job, good job. Five million. Proud of you. Half of the budget almost yeah. seems like it would go just to cast and crew. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. You know what I think we haven't shouted? We haven't shouted out to Hoyt Van Hoyt. Ah! Well, we're, 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 gonna, we're gonna get there. That's what I was saying. We're, we're yeah, gonna I'll get Hoyt there. Van we're, we're gonna get there. Right. That's that's an greatest that's DP of all time. Yeah, that's that's what that's I was. What you were that's that's, what that's its own. Yeah. That's its own. Yeah. All right. We had to get him. Uh huh. So so gentlemen, back uh-huh. to what I was saying. A theatrical window of at least a hundred days, and then twenty percent of the film's wait, wait, first wait, dollar on. gross. A theatrical window of so it has to be in the theaters for just a hundred days. Yes, so. 
Oh, I want more. I want yeah. more. It's yeah. a third of a Same, year. Bro. It needs to stay in movies permanently. It needs it needs to have a Raiders of the Lost Ark window, you know, which was like a year or something like that. Dang. Jurassic Park, I think, was a year and a quarter. That yeah. too. 20% of the film's first dollar gross, which is a lot, you know. It depends on how it, you know, performs, which is, you know, that's all. That's a sketchy move right there for him. And a three-week period before and after the film's release in which Universal could not release another film. So they had to wait three weeks after Super Mario Bros., at least. Something like yeah, Stuff like that. Um, we yeah, talked Tom to- Cruise isn't very happy uh, that that came out after. Oh, really? He, have you not seen any of his interviews? He's huh. furious. I did not know He's that. like, what the hell? No one's going to go see my movie. They're like, okay, people are going to go see your movie. I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah, huh. it's very interesting. Perfect. So Oppenheimer is the first script. We've already talked about how it's in first person as he went to narr- the narrative to be conveyed from Oppenheimer's perspective. Yeah, let's see here. Filming involved the use of real explosives to recreate the Trinity nuclear test, forging the use of Com- uh, foregoing the use of computer-generated graphics, a special set was created with gasoline, propane, aluminum, powder, and magnesium being used. One, to also I'll add on this, the only thing, the only tidbit I found, and he doesn't really want to give out all his little bells and whistles of how he did it, right. is ping pongs ping were pongs. a huge piece of it. Yeah, really. They were launching ping pongs, and uh. they were looking at, so that's how they were getting some of the particle Oh, little wow. things that they were doing really? all these that's things cool. and they were like covered in different materials and stuff. That's cool. I can see And that's, see what, that's how that's they, it was cool. just this Dude, little thing. I, I can see that. I saw some weird, they're saying that Oppenheimer could be a top 11 box office bomb. Hmm. Like number eight, they said right here it says Sunshine's the worst. Oh, wait, what? Number one. Oh, wow. Number one. Whoa. Okay, historically, Danny Boyle's movies and it's saying yeah. that Chris, terrible at the box office. And then they're going to say Christopher movies. Nolan, great movies. Christopher yeah. Nolan's Oppenheimer is going to be the second worst box office he's had since. Uh, la, la, la. Obviously, that is some high school kid writing for whatever <laughs> this stupid article. It says it said no it, idea what he's talking said about. It'll be the worst. Well, that might be because it's rated R, and that it will make of all of its limits. money within a week, yeah. guaranteed. Yeah, there's there's no way tickets are sold out at my IMAX that I go to until mid September. Yeah. I mean, that, that makes... Mid-September? Mid-September. I think like, that's a there's, load. There's, there's little seats here and there. I think that was just... That's, like, that's a load of BS. Right? I'm yeah. serious. I yeah, I see what you're talking about. Oh, wait, you're saying his is BS. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, that was yeah. BS. 100%. They said sunshine at one? Screw him, bro. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, that's probably facts. They said facts. tenant was a bunch. That's probably, sunshine that's probably factual. One. That's crazy. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Right. Some 12-year-old. So, so, Scott R. Fisher refers to them as bigotures. Well... I, let's see. I, y'all made me lose my uh, my train Sorry. of thought. So I was talking about the the practical effects. Yeah. yeah. So we're good there. As a team tried to make the models as large as possible, a whole 1940s style town was built from scratch. So pretty, the, pretty no no studio work. No studio work. They actually shot inside of Oppenheimer's real house. Yep. And then yeah. they they built everything. Insane. Everything. That's so cool. Yeah. Nobody does that. So, you know, we can't tell Oscars. This definitely is going to have <laughs> some sort of nomination. It will have every nomination. I, I think it's going to have, yeah, you're right, every nomination. Every nomination. I got 10 minutes. All right, so 10 minutes yeah. before you leave. If, we, if, you, if you have to leave, you right, know, we'll yeah, just keep right. going. All right, so categories. So hit picks. Do any of y'all have... Like, what did y'all love the, the most? Fra- the framework. The framework? framework I like that. Phenomenal. I framework. liked acting, the score with the cinematography all together, and the writing. and the, uh, Yeah. It was, yeah. There's nothing yeah. wrong about this movie. <laughs> yeah. The feel. The, the yes. feel that all of the, all of the pieces together allow you to just be immersive and to feel it. it like, yeah. The, and that's probably a lot to do with like the theater and the IMAX and the sound and stuff like that. But the score, I, I would say, yeah. yeah. To that, me, that's always the most important in every movie. That's just my own, I guess, opinion. But how it was done, you can just those panic attacks, the, yeah. the silence. Who's ever created who's ever silence made, who's like ever that? Who's ever made silence so loud? <laughs> yeah, that's oh, a good. That's, that's, a good a, point. that's so true. very well put. Yeah. So I would say for mine. The immersiveness yeah, of this like and that. the insight on something that's not as 
predominantly known. Yeah. You know, we don't, you know, like we it talked about earlier. Story. It told a new story. We don't know too much about Oppenheimer with, you know, on a larger scale as we and should. There's not a lot on him. If you look, scour the internet, there's not, not much. Not too much. You kind of you got to do well, what you did through <laughs> books. Yeah. Well, books and that's, is where it is. That's where the black and white sequences are so interesting because a, there's a lot of it that is just opinion. It's not fact because yeah. we don't really know. There's so much because it was such a long time ago. There's pieces that were like, was he? Did he do that? We don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, good point. Nitpicks. Uh, Sammy, you got any nitpicks? I got to think about it. Like, I got to grasp it. So, all right. one of y'all so, go. All right. let me, let David, me, what do you got? Um, yeah, I know I know. Um, Taylor's not going to like this, but some brief, like, dialogue, clarity issues. Like, yeah. I, I would just love to just have, like, not had to listen as hard. That That's just, like, me personally. What do you think you would have gained from that, though? Like a better grasp of, I guess, what they're saying. Yeah. I think I like. I, I don't know. I just is that disc- important though? I mean, yeah. Yeah, kind of. To, to the so? story, yeah. To the story of like what is, is going on. Is fully on. understanding the story that important? It's like yes and I maybe think, that's not his I, mission. I just, just for me personally, I think for some other viewers that are kind of like me, they just want to like just hear what they're saying. Because like, inevitably, you'll see this at home with subtitles. Yeah. yeah. And then you'll be like, oh. Like, because that's. You'll go back to watch right. it. Which like, is, like with Tenet, is that like Tenet, everyone is undeniably hard. It's needs multiple very re-watches. difficult. But if you go back so and you watch heavy. Tenet yeah. at home tonight with subtitles, you're like, whoa. There was. See, a, whoa, hey, that's that's. My cool. mom makes fun of me for doing subtitles. I'm like, I like to read subtitles because yeah. it, it goes into my brain. Better. Did like you guys know. know that you can watch subtitles at the big screen? Dude, that would be insane. There, there will be a CC next to your, like, if you're on Fandango or whatever. Huh. And they have dedicated screens for, like, people that, that have troubles with hearing and stuff. I, we hearing went to pain. one on accident, and I'm like, oh, this is so cool. I like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good deal. I think it was kind of, I like, the, it's kind of the way that Christopher Nolan made it, that it was a little hard to follow, but now that I've marinated. Now that you've marinated, if you rewatch if I, if it, I it'll watch be it again, easy. Yeah. I'll, I don't, I'll be clear I don't think I'll I'll you were wrong, but because I've thought about this too. It's like, if you fully understood everything, like, what would change? Yeah. How much? Because then the second time you watch it, it wouldn't be any different. But if it was yeah. the second time for us, it'll be revolutionary. Because we're all yeah. going to see this again one way or another. Yeah, yeah I'm definitely so. watching this again. I think yeah. I, I might have already got tickets. Yeah. So, <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> nice. All right, so, Taylor, do you have any <laughs> any nitpicks? Any nitpicks? Just real quick. Nope. Any nitpicks? <sighs> Do you want me to? Sh- do you want me to share? It's, it's going to be something that we haven't said. The yeah, I'm predicting the thing that I and I, I hate saying this because at, in any nitpicks that I that I have, I feel like go against what he was trying to do. That's how I feel too. That's smart. And, yeah. and, and, and that's I why I, I hate that. critics yeah. so much. Oh, and, but I am one myself. Hate them. Because they I think about them. the movies very Oh, it's too long. Oh, if they would have done this, I would have had a better time. I think... I think what? I think no. critics are going to try to... I've seen a lot. I think they're going to go yes. after it. Yeah. Well, well, right now it has 94% tomato meter. Oh, yeah. I looked at that. Which is the that. exact same as The Dark Knight had. Yeah. So. More people will always be drawn to negative reviews over positive reviews. And so for people that that's make content and stuff. Up. That's how messed up it is. It like, is. They're, totally. they're out to make you look bad. They're, they're, Let's they're, talk some shit on Oppenheimer. Oh, I'm yeah. going to click that. What did he yeah. hate about? Of course the people are going to start saying stuff. But I think the one thing that I, I kept thinking about, if I had if, if I had to nitpick, is that this movie is not for everybody. No, that that's is, true. That is very true. That's a good it point. Is very From a definitely a product that you're creating to sell. From that aspect, kids cannot see this. And movie. This is not no. a this is not a typical Christopher Nolan action. No, movie. this is a, yeah. this is a new when you new vibe. when you go to the theater to go see any of his Batman movies, you know it's going to be a you know, superhero you know movie. Gonna happen. Yeah. You're like, oh man, I'm just yes. This I did not think it, yeah. it was gonna go. The second this movie starts, I'm like, oh no. Like this is bad. Nope. And then the bomb, and I'm like, oh no! <laughs> and, but you're stuck, and you yeah. can't. Un- yeah, yeah. So yeah. like, I I think I, I don't think my mom is gonna have a great time. My at this. parents aren't gonna like this movie. Yeah. I they're, hope they're not a psychological kind of movie. <laughs> yeah. I hope it's they not get for it. everyone. It's yeah. not. It's not for everyone. But yeah. th- but at the same time, every human that's alive needs to see this movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it it gives you a way better view of it. Yeah. yeah. The, just, not even the movie, just the historical event. 
Everybody Probably. needs to fear the bomb. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. All right. So here's my nitpick. All right. Everything we've every so listen, everything we've been talking about, right? It's too long. You gotta understand it. All those and like you said, they all go like eat like every nitpick goes against what it's intended for. So to rewatch it but we rewatch it multiple times to understand it more and to hear everything that was multiple, said. It's kinda you, you have to set out. out set three hours again. Like of your time to wa- well, in order to this watch. This isn't going to be a movie you're going to sit down and watch every Saturday. This is a movie that's right. going to be every only so because I'm years. busy. Only because I'm busy. Yeah, I, if same. if I <laughs> I would go and if I you want to just get destroyed every every day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. just yeah. get yes. annihilated uh-huh. yeah, by like, the bomb. I feel like I feel like Inception was a little easier to understand. You know, like I feel like somehow was, uh, somehow. somehow that's a that's a complicated movie. And, but it you, is. You're, you're right. It Whereas is. this one wasn't as heavy. clear but, to understand. Okay, I feel you like. you have a good point. In some of his movies, Nolan kind of holds your hand. Yeah, like okay, guys, your this hand. is what's happening. In, in Interstellar, he kind of does. Yeah, it. he helps Interstellar, it. In Interstellar, the, the first time they, I saw it, yeah. I could follow it. Yeah, easy. Prestige, I was yeah. never. Yeah. Confused. It is still very complicated. The fifth, the fifth dimension was a hair complicated, <laughs> but outside of that, it was yeah straightforward. Like this. Like this one, he like he kind of felt stupid yes, a little you bit. Did. You I felt, felt stupid. Yeah, like, like me and Dan that's Dan important. And you didn't you like need him. to be intimidated by yeah. these people, Maybe, yeah. which is the yeah. point of the film. Yes, but in order to me understand it more, I want to wa- rewatch it. But then again, like yeah, oh, I have to watch three hours. I wish of this that it was times? like we didn't have to rewatch. That's what you're saying. We didn't have to rewatch it. Book a yeah. twenty dollar ticket. But I think it's good for three that hours you pull out yeah. time for Need to go movie pee could... for a little bit. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Exactly. I, I think it's a movie yeah. that there's you no, need to pull out. Time. There's, there's no air to breathe. Is my other nitpick for, to for, close it out for people that that, that enjoy art? Yeah. It, is there a a better experience? I don't think so. That's and that's the that's the point. Is that this is the most important piece of art ever created cuz there's nothing like it this isn't a movie like you 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 a, you go a through a journey it's cinema it's cinema, it's cinema. <laughs> yeah. i love it all right cultural impact um, i'm just going to rattle this off real quick um, y'all let me know just let me know what y'all think that was a bad voice crack so we've, we've talked, all had them, brother. We've all had them. So we were talking about puberty's a bitch. Yeah, I remember that many, yeah. many years. Ago. I, I'm, I'm a late bloomer. I'm a late bloomer. <laughs> so all right. So with Oppenheimer, so with J. Robert Oppenheimer, we have more awareness of his presence. I feel like, and more of his we, role with bringing everyone who knows it has a way better view. Of yes, World War II and the atom bomb. Like this is one of the few horrific events of the World War II era. Like this is one of Thousands. This is the worst. The, yeah. the worst. Yeah. And I think that what it really sums up is him envisioning a world destroyed by his own creation. Yeah. And I think that is very well shown. Uh, uh-huh. Good point. Uh, David, do you need to leave? Uh, no. She five more minutes. She said we're gonna be there at two fifteen. Okay. All right, boys. All right. So let's let's, jam let, it let's in. do what we can. But if you have to leave, yeah, if I have to leave, I have, have to, leave. to leave. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll cover for you. All right. All right. So, but no, like. I do think that there were more, you know, there's going to be a stronger awareness of like the role that Oppenheimer played with us understanding theories and like he really projected science within and I, America and like yeah. the studying of all these different theories within America, let alone making making America a superpower. You know, like we like we harness like the power of the sun now because of Oppenheimer, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but and in doing that, we also opened up the new world of nuclear we, yeah, weapons. Yeah, we we bro- we opened up the brave new world, and that's what there's, I think the ending showed perfectly. There's a little scene in Interstellar where he talks about um, uh, M- MRIs detecting mm-hmm. his his wife's because that's like how his wife obviously died. Right. You don't really see it. MRIs would not be possible if it wasn't for a lot of his work. Yeah. Like that, that led to that. So, like, we have so much to be grateful for, like, people of today that live in now because of that moment. Yeah. That, that opened so many doors in science. It did. It did. Questions needing answers. Do y'all have any that really, that we can. <laughs> I can answer any questions you have about the movie. Just, uh... <laughs> okay. yeah, just ask Taylor. He's our internet guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll, 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 any questions? What happened go to, to Strauss? Oh. The general? What happened after? 
What do you mean? Like after Michael. the bomb? Yeah. He, he, or lost after. His, he lost his spot at, in the cabinet. Did mm. he just... No, 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 no. So right after, if you remember when they were closing up Los Alamos, he's like, do you need me to come to Washington? He's like, no. And that's where he's like, oh, shit, they don't need me anymore. Mm. So like he, he, yeah. he was still a general for many years. I, yeah. I, th- I think he retired. Yeah, and then they brought him in for the cross examination, and that's when he was. Oh, you're he, talking about Matt Damon's character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that, yeah no, gross. we're talking about Robert Downey's. Yeah. Oh, I was talking um, about Strauss. Yeah, it was Strauss. Oh, Strauss. I, I, I was, the, I was for the Senate mixing them. I don't, I don't know, because he didn't get his cadency. I think he just went I think quiet. He just, yeah, yeah, I think he just. I think, he just like, I think his life just kind of ended. He just. <laughs> he recluse. Hopefully, he put a gun in his mouth. But, um, <laughs> Damn. Damn. <Okay. laughs> wow. Damn. Damn. We destroyed this man's life. Yeah. I mean, I have such a deep love and respect for like the great scientist of of mankind, and he but is not like the number one. Strauss yeah. was destroyed, but it does say that because of Strauss, Oppenheimer's spirit was never the same. Huh. His person was shattered. Do you guys wow. know how Oppenheimer died? Throat he, cancer. Yeah, throat cancer. Yeah, he smoked. For some reason, I thought so he much. committed suicide. I don't, I don't know. Why. Oh, oh, so here's I a spread, question. Jean Tadlock did. Jean did. They, Hold on. they portrayed no. her death perfectly. She she died was, on pillows in. Okay, was, think about this. This there is a lot of mystery. No yeah, one many knows how she think died. She was killed. To 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 kneel yourself into a bathtub and drown yourself is incredibly difficult. You have to inhale it. How was that? Imp- how is that possible? Yes, she had to sit down there and like, gir- like inhale that. Like, that's, so Gene Tatlock's uh, dad you... shows up yes, and I, he I finds. Read, I read about that. That's not the way to go. Did not no. call the cops for like eight hours. Oh my gosh! So there's a lot of like, uh, what, what, why? What were you doing, did, Dad? Did he kill? No one really knows. Most people believe that she did take her own life because she had a lot of pills and there's a yeah, lot of what, alcohol what in what her kind? system. Yeah. But there's a lot of mystery around that. And that's why they just show these quick little clips. You see her in the tub. You see the pillows. You're like, what the? Oh, shit. It's like, I think I get an idea. But yeah, that's a real. She also had a death note. That's more of a. She had a death note? She had a death note. They should have brought that in. There's more of a real life conspiracy, like, question needing answer here. Good deal. Do you have any questions about what happened? Or how Not, something worked. I had something. Also, the doctor that checked her said if someone wanted to cleverly kill someone, that's the way to do uh-huh. it. Uh-huh. Mm. That's yes. what it said. Yes. That's what it said. There's a lot of mystery Gross. around that. Interesting. Gross. Do you need to leave? Uh, well, I told them to text me when you get here, and no one's texted me. Okay. So I don't know what that means. Sounds good. Sounds good. me that they're not here yet. Did you, did you, just, want, did you just want to bail out? Uh... We'll, what, do you think I should like call them real quick? We'll give you a heroic. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll give you a heroic. Let's just exit. let's just keep going until you have to, and then it will just take thirty seconds to just end it. Let's just keep going. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. But yeah, all we right. need. I mean, yeah. All yeah. right. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, let's see here. So I do not have any questions that I need answered that I can think of. Mm. I had some and I didn't write them down. I should have. All right. But notable acting performances. So being Killian's first lead role. I think he carried it well. Definitely, hundred percent. Agree. Well, well, first it, lead, first lead with Nolan. Yeah, thir- first lead with Nolan. You know, especially like on this caliber is yeah, he did incredible. Yeah, this big of a stage. Emily Blunt always the knockout. Mm-hmm. Matt Damon and Robert Downey Jr. They did great, sides. phenomenal as you know as we expected. Definitely wow. Emily Blunt. I really liked her performance. Yeah. Of yeah, course. I mean, she didn't have. I feel like she didn't have that much dialogue in comparison to no. everyone else, and she still did it perfectly. She yeah. still stole the show. It seems like. I think one of my favorites that sticks out, probably because I watched the trailer too many times, um, <laughs> is Kenneth Bra. Kenneth Bra- Brana. Brana. Is that he says last name? Yeah. What, 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 he what plays. He? So he plays Niels Bohr, and Niels Bohr was one of the guys that helped Oppenheimer finish the th- the, the the theorem. It was yeah. very difficult. And Niels Bohr was championed as a god at the time. And that's why when he shows up, everyone's like, he's here, we're going to do it. And then he pulls Oppenheimer aside and has a very he's famous, like, he's like, you, should, you need to know what you're doing. Yeah, you should be careful. And even Einstein, he's like, I don't want to be a part of this because I know what this will lead to. Yeah. He fully knew where this was going to happen. And 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 when, when Kenneth like breaks him down, he's like, you... You don't know what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. This is gonna be, this this will kill you, and it it, it did. I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Florence Pugh very obviously going places. 
Oh, yeah. She's going places. Oh, she's oh, she's 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 she has special. that new movie called uh, oh, she's so Wait, good. We're in Time with Andrew Garfield coming out. Yeah. Uh, Wait, no, it's called. Uh, I, I I don't I know a little bit of it, but she's going yeah, places. You no. guys have obviously seen Hereditary. Yeah. Yo. Well, yeah. <laughs> Midsummer. I'm sorry. I'm Mid- sorry. Midsummer. Midsummer. She's awesome in that. Uh, <laughs> she's good in that. Not right now, boys. Just right just now. everything. Um, we're gonna have to do those at least Hereditary. I guess we can go. <laughs> yeah. I've been listening to the soundtrack too much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, it's called "We Live in Time." We live in time. I think I know what you're I talking. Gotta look about. that up. I hadn't heard of it. Huh. Apparently, it's supposed to be pretty interesting. I'm excited. I love I love Florence Pugh. Casey Affleck really caught my eye. He was only that. He only had one like, scene. F- I like, almost didn't recognize same. him. He he. I know. He I, looked I was like, weird. wait, where's where have I seen him? Maybe because he shaved. I forgot he was shaved. related to Ben. Yeah, because he always has the super the, long well, hair and the beard. Well, they're uh-huh. they're brothers. All right, so with uh, David having to leave with us, let's uh, let's let's pick this back up and um, try to finish. We're not trying to ramble too too. Yeah, much. not trying to ramble too much. So we've mentioned Kenneth Kenneth Branagh. Um, I've always thought he was too much of a stage actor and everything that I've seen. You I mean, know, he is. He's very he, classically well, trained. He, he yeah. is he's very classically trained. I feel like he dials it up too much in a lot of stuff. <laughs> this one, he was just enough, like yeah. just the perfect amount of. I'm gonna play it, be subtle. I'm just gonna go in, say a few lines, put on an accent. We're good. I thought he did it perfectly. I actually really appreciated. We've already mentioned. I, I've already mentioned Robert Downey Jr. I love him. He just he still had a little too much baggage. I feel like now that you now that you, now say that you guys that, say that, that I have noticed that. But I mean that's acting. That's acting. That's I, acting. I, I, I love everyone I, has their own little sizzle. And I yeah. love Robert Downey. Jr. I wouldn't he, change it. Like yeah, we same. can nitpick it, but like I wouldn't. I wouldn't change. I wouldn't that. change it. Yeah, it's like it's what he brought. I mean, I totally understand it. I get what you're saying though. Yeah, yeah. I, I I love. And we're not even gonna get into recasting. No, no. no. What's not even Rami Malek did phenomenal. What's the guy's name? So if if you guys didn't recognize him, the old man from The Dark Knight Rises that hangs out with Batman in the pit. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the guy that plays Einstein. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Oh, Tom yeah. Conti. Tom Conti. Yeah. Killed it. Phenomenal. Dude, like. As Einstein. That's, I how, just... that's how many actors did those little skits that were so good. Insane. Mm-hmm. So, Honestly. Go ahead. One final note that I'm going to say is that you shouldn't watch this podcast unless you've seen it. And if you haven't seen it, go watch it. Not once, not twice, but three times. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. anyone who does watch this or listens or whatever, like, is inspired to go see it. Yeah. Yes. That too. If you've made it through the whole thing and you hadn't seen and it. And I think, you know what we've also done? We haven't spoiled it too bad. No, no. not really. Well, because it, we've given our reaction to the, the movie. The ending is kind of like, you know, this is what you're going to feel. And I knew that going into it. Most Christopher Nolan movies, you go into it with a mystery because he hates yeah. the internet. He doesn't share his scripts. That's the whole thing. But this, it's all based from a book. So, like, yeah. you can, the movie can be spoiled, who's like gonna the details. Read, who's going to read the book? But it's. <laughs> It's a Pulitzer Prize winning book. You need to yeah. read this. It's, go- it's I'm, so I'm good. To. I will. I will. Sure. But like, if you know all the details and you know everything that happens in it, you can still have the same experience that we all did. Right. Because you were still shocked and you read. Yeah. Three, I knew four everything books. and yeah. I had no idea what I was getting into. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Um. So I'm gonna skip over favorite quotes unless y'all had some. I didn't catch any. Like that really stood out to me. You know? I think my favorite near zero was pretty near good. zero. Yeah, zero. That's, yeah, that is actually a good point. If you, zero, if you go zero down, would be nice. Yeah, zero. What's would be nice. cool in the background is the actual mathematical formula that they were that they were doing that shows how because the sky is uh, like seventy percent nitrogen and nitrogen is very very flammable and that's why yeah. is that if the if it goes up high enough it'll just it's a chain reaction and there's a cool you, 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 like anybody can look this up later. There is an actual mathematical formula that shows how big the bomb would have to be for that to happen. It's, it's still possible. Man, it's crazy. I don't want that to be. It's, yeah, let's, ve- it's please, crazy. No, if it's, if there's a mathematical equation that says, "Hey, I know how to destroy the world." Yeah, that's that's, <laughs> and we had the resources to do it. That would be insane. We that do have scary. the resources do. to do it. Yeah. That's the cra- That's the scary I know. part. I know. Exactly. That's the scary part, boys. <laughs> yeah. So, Hoyt van Hoytema. Oh. Swiss Dutch cinematographer. Finally got Probably to the him. greatest in his field of all time. Yeah. Look at anything he's ever uh, done. He's Look he's at Dune, Blade Runner. Yeah. 
So well, he's, you, he, he did yeah. The Fighter. Nope. He Interstellar, did Spectre, Dunkirk, Spectre, Ad Astra, Tenet. which I know you love. <laughs> nope. Uh, he, he worked on, yeah, Interstellar, Dunkirk, and the Tenet. The dude. He did Ad Astra. Well, yeah. and what's, what's crazy Bro. is that the guy, the fighter, I hope this doesn't come across fighter. as mean, but he's not like in incredibly good shape. He's he's a little bit he has he's a little bit of a heavy set figure Hoedeman Hoedeman, but he's not acting. The reason I, I know, but the reason I'm saying this is that those IMAX cameras are like sixty pounds, and he has it on his freaking shoulder. It's the heaviest camera that you can shoot with. So the guy who isn't necessarily in the best of shape is working his ass off holding this giant camera. Well, he holds it. He's actually he, he works oh, yeah. as wow. camera op. Yeah, yeah, that is. yeah wow. he runs the camera. Yeah, wow, that's pretty impressive. Um, I don't think about yeah, I definitely want to see more of his work. I'm excited to see more of his stuff coming out. I mean, he's obviously like he's, he's he's right there with he's, Roger he's, he's Deakins. There. He's right there with um. He'll win uh, an Oscar for that. Yeah, I think cinematography. Richard uh, Robert Deakins. Roger Deakins. Roger Deakins. Yeah, you're good. Lost that. S- scoring soundtrack: Ludwig Gordonson. Mm. Lud- Lud- Ludwig. Ludwig. I don't know. Whatever. Previous work: Fruit what? Steel, Fruit Vale Station, Creed, all the Creed franchise. Uh, both Black Panthers, Tenet and The Mandalorian. Score of Tenet is is one of my very favorites. well done. I mean, yeah. he's done he's w- done like won a lot of awards, like going with Rihanna and like all these other uh-huh. uh, artists. I mean, he's he's paving a way. Like like we said, we compared him with um, Hans Zimmer. Mm-hmm. He's he's going he's getting to that level. I feel well, like. and one of the things that he does is so like Hans Zimmer is a master with the instruments. Yeah, like that's what he does. But the sounds that he used for Oppenheimer, most of the sounds are 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 just objects hitting objects. Yeah, like I could tell where one was like that's a that's a drone. Yeah, he just took a- there's a lot of sounds like I I have been listening to it like crazy in my car, way too loud. And there's a lot of times where you can just hear inhales. He'd be like. It's yeah. just someone inhaling. And you're like, what the? Is that what that was? Like, yeah. he's very, he's not typical yeah. as far as like sounds that he's making and stuff like Great. that. This movie is not typical. So no, you no, have not to have typical. No. no. Not the ordinary. Well, gentlemen, I don't have any re- rewrites or inserts or recasting. I, you know, I, I didn't think of it too much. I know that Christopher Nolan is a very calculated. Writer and director. The only recast is we should have been PAs on this. Like that's the only <laughs> of thing. Of course, <laughs> well, re, well, re, re, uh, that would have been awesome. I'm not worthy by any means, but that I would w- die. Yeah, yeah, I would have. I would have been killed. You know, I yeah, I would have been killed by Christopher Nolan, <laughs> strangled by him by he himself. I think that was a great note to finish on, boys. Yeah, guys, this was a big movie. Sadly, David couldn't finish with us. Hey, hey. We'll get we'll get we'll give him. A, he gets he gets a shout out. Do you have to he go back to out. like he's elementary go, school? Or, <laughs> is that he's going to the beach? Okay, okay. He's going to the beach. Oh. But gentlemen, no, like this, this was one half of the Barbenheimer craze that has been taking over this past summer. We I were, don't even think I could be on your Barbie episode, by the way, because I would just want to talk about Oppenheimer. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 why you're not. That's why you're not going to be, be talking about Barbenheimer. You drove an hour Barbenheimer. to get here because I this was the most important movie of all time. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm very glad that you were able to join us, Samuel. Likewise to you, and everyone. If you listened or watched this, thank you all for coming in and joining and being a part of this. Um, we really hope that you tune in next time. And we please and we highly recommend this movie. Not yeah. even highly, like just. You have to watch it. You have, you have to, to make, check it. Please. I'm I'm going to make a pilgrimage to drive to the closest 70 mil or wherever five six hours. Like I thought about it, I may it's join totally you. worth it. I may join you. Yeah, let's go. I'm going to Houston sometime soon. Let's go. So I'll let you know. Mm-hmm. So right. if you have any questions, if you have any requests on what films to do, we're hoping to do Whiplash soon. <laughs> Barbie's coming up. Gotta do it. 80s, like an 80s film sometime soon. I might have to join your Whiplash one, because that was my favorite movie until this. Well, all right, yeah. well, we'll, we'll, we'll probably hit you up. Oh, uh, hey, I got an uh, 80s movie. I, I was thinking of what, what, which one were we thinking I of? Have, I have some ideas. I'll, I'll let you know afterwards. Oh. Maybe, that, uh, John Hughes. The Matrix needs to be in your list. Well, John Hughes or Pre- Predator. Ooh, I have, nice, I have nice Predator stuff. lined up for with two guys. Let us know what you think. Uh, drop any suggestions, email us at mailbag at bowtiemovielounge.com um, or uh, even follow like our socials, which we have Instagram. We do have a Facebook, which no one follows. We do have a pretty good following on TikTok, honestly. <laughs> we actually have a good TikTok. You can't I mean, tell the public that. I didn't know you had a TikTok. Yeah, we have a TikTok. It's yeah. awesome. 
We, it, we, we, posted, it out, we posted a good Barbenheimer meme that I actually made. Oh, I like Handcrafted. It. Good. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. We will see you next time at Bowtie Movie Lunch. Adios. Thank you.